Don and Mike show, and they'll say what they wish. Where else would you rather be than right here, right now? No! We'd like to introduce our brand new representation. There they are. They're in the office today. Suffice it to say, the guys at Ephraim and Associates were not thrilled with our choice, but we said... We just need someone to TCB. Yeah. True story. He was a neo-Nazi with one true enemy. Himself. A man of faith. A man of hate. And his soul torn apart. You would especially advise. Rob Spiewak. Different style of man. Maury Fisher, Rob. Tell me about it. Good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Phillips and all the ships at sea. Grammy. Taste like period. Don Geronimo and Mike. Oh! Thanks, Rob. Hi, and thanks for listening, everybody. Don and Mike show new episode on this Thursday. D, July 31. Right. From anywhere, 877-365-3636. Canada, 800-636-1067. DC, 202-432-1067. I'm Don and Mike. Buzz Burbank here. Is anyone listening? Hey, what happened? Shut up. Did you wash the ass today? I just got Does that someone call for a doctor? I just got that in. Wow. Yeah, Ooh. baby. Good thing I didn't play those additional tapes. <laughs> we were going to flat run out of music. Flat out. out. We'd be dry. Dry as a bone. We'd be dry as Kathy Lee Gifford. You reckon she's dry? You know she's dry. Yeah, she's dusty. She's so dry. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Hi, and uh, welcome to the, uh, to the show, everybody. Uh, I'm glad to tell you that we don't have a hangover effect. From uh, our meeting yesterday. Good. Although, uh, <laughs> they just can't let it go. No. You know? I mean, we come in today, and uh, Mike was closing on a house, so Mike was a little late uh, getting to work today. And that's an excused, you know, being late, although of I called. Yeah, you're here, yes. though. And I called. You're here for the beginning of the show. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you got to miss at about... And this is the usual time for the executives to come in. Mm -hmm. Now, I got here today at the usual time, mm -hmm. about an hour and a half before the show. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sitting in there, reading the paper, answering phone calls, doing the work for the show. Mm -hmm. I'm there the whole time. Nobody sticks their head. I mean, Charlie comes in. Yeah. Robbie comes in. Right. Amy comes in. About quarter till three. That's when uh, the guy that doesn't like his name being said on the radio, mm -hmm. Michael Hughes, that's about the time that he comes in and goes, Hey, so what would you think of the meeting yesterday? <laughs> you know, oh, and, uh -oh. Oh, and I said, uh, Watch out. It was, you know, it was less than, less than productive. And, yeah, just saw Rob Bankton walk down the hall. Yeah. Wow. And, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Ron, how you doing? And, uh, you know, then he wants, he wants to relive the whole thing again. Yes. Yeah. Well, why were you upset yesterday? Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is a, a new day, a new regime. We're not upset. No, I mean, we're just, we're not upset. We're not. We're laughing about it. Yes. We're not upset. Really, we're not. No, I mean, we're just, we've been through things many times with many different people, and we are slightly negative about the chances of improvement. Sure. Only because we've been, as I mentioned yesterday, through 17 of these meetings, right. and then, you know, they won't let it go. They, they could change that negativism. They could change our attitudes. Sure could. They all perhaps have the power to do it. I, I don't believe they... They don't want to. They either don't want to, nor do they know how. <laughs> hmm. But anyway, it was... It's just weird. No, you know what? Okay. No, wrong. They don't want to. That must be. I don't think, know. but I, they could prove me wrong. Fifteen minutes before the show, now I'm here all day, mm -hmm. but they come in fifteen minutes before the show. Right. You know. So what'd you think yesterday? Well, you know, and I try to lowball it. No, it was, uh, you know, it was interesting, like they all are. Mm -hmm. No, come on. I'm getting the sense that, uh, you know, like it didn't get back to him that we did a half hour on it yesterday. <laughs> I, I'm getting the sense that uh, you weren't totally happy with the meeting <laughs> yesterday, and I'm, you know, I'm just biting my tongue, just, mm -hmm. just going. And I'm actually biting my tongue. I'm going, You mean great yesterday, Michael? Anyway, uh, that's all I get to say about that. As <laughs> Otherwise, you as, couldn't be happier. As Forrest Gump said, yes. Yeah. I, I couldn't be happier. Mm -hmm. You know, I was very happy until 2.45. I understand. I think what we're going to have to do is, and, and, I, and I hope that the executives here realize that it's in their best interest and our best interest, mm -hmm. that I think the end game is, they want us to just come in and do a good show. 
So I believe what I'm going to do, and I will do this at my own expense, as I have to do everything on this show, I'm going to uh, outfit our office with the electric fence, and I'm going to ask all of the executives to wear the collar, yeah. to wear the collars Keep them out. when they are in the building. Mm -hmm. Now, it's That's fair. why they get like them about two feet away from our door, and it's... <laughs> Now, it's fair game. You mm -hmm. catch us in the bathroom. Yeah. You catch us in the hallway on, on the way down. That that's fair. fair. You you hide in the parking lot as uh, occasionally you know what, they like we, to do. We can get a, around that one, too. You know, with the electric fence, you can have that little trainer thing, too. A little button that you carry. You should so, probably have that anyway. So if you get yeah. near one of them, they're coming down to you. Yeah. It's like, I want... Ow! And they just ow. keep walking by. But we have to come up with a way for them to buy into the plan of why they should wear the electric fence underneath their designer collars and the shirts that have their initials sewn into the, into the sleeves. That's the easiest thing of all. Just say, this is your new vice president collar. Absolutely. And maybe it doesn't have to be on the neck. Uh-huh. Oh, maybe it could be the genital cuff. Yeah, good luck. Well, then what we're going to have to do is take him out and give him some roofies. Yes, and uh, get him all wet. And who wants to take down Michael Hughes or Alan Lightwan's pants to to put the... Yes, very small collars. <laughs> maybe we'll give them a rock king. Yeah, I'm, I'm having well, well, that's what it would be yeah. like. I yeah. understand. But it would have to be something uh, that they wouldn't notice. It would have to have prongs on it going the opposite direction so they couldn't slip it off. You know, we need, we need that James Bond guy. We really need mm -hmm. that, that dude. And I'm not talking about uh, John Cleese, no. the, the new James Bond. I mean, well, the other guy's dead. Well, then someone get a shovel because that's the guy we need, the guy that would you. come up with the, yeah, Q, the guy that would come up with the great stuff and gadgets for, for James Bond. You don't like John Cleese as the replacement for Q? I do not. I don't like John Cleese. I do like John Cleese. You do like John Cleese. I do like John Cleese. I think he's incredibly funny. His oh, good. I'm glad because his, we share that. I, I love John Cleese. His talent, you really want to see his talent wasted. Uh, when it comes out on DVD, watch The In-Laws with Albert Brooks and Michael Douglas. Uh, and that's and, a, supposed to be a crappy movie. And watch John Cle Cleese doing a, a role that... Uh, that uh, Clay Aiken from American Idol could have pulled off. <laughs> really? Really? Man. Awful. I liked John Cleese. He was my only thing that I liked in Rat Race. If you saw that, because they had him have big teeth, and that's fine. That's the second movie you've mentioned that I don't know. Mm. Rat Race, don't feel bad about that, Mark. Yeah, In-Laws and Rat Race, I'm not tracking. Rat Race was an awful movie with Whoopi oh. Goldberg and uh, John Lovitz. Yeah, and uh, a lot of people. That and Mr. Said, Bean. I and, go uh, back to the greatest movie ever made, one of them, comedies. Meaning of life. <laughs> I'm a Monty Python yeah. guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know what? And I, and I tell you to this day, you take a bunch of people into a room, you put on the meaning of life. It is the definitive, do you, it is the definitive, do you like Monty Python movie or not? Mm -hmm. no. you, put, you put a dozen people in the room, put that on, six people are going to laugh their asses off, and six people are going to walk on out. I'll be on the way out. <laughs> not a Monty Python fan, but I will tell you something I saw. Part one. Tell you, what I, tell you what I saw today. British humor. That did crack me up, man. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm watching uh, the Bryant Gumbel show on HBO, right. the uh, the sports show. Yes, and they're doing a the thing on uh, on Beckham. So oh, yeah. I'm watching yeah. this because you know I'm like everybody. I don't know, I don't know a lot about this dude. And yeah, with his uh, samurai hairdo. From what I've heard, he's really a kind of a mediocre soccer player. But mm -hmm. for whatever reason, he's got the charisma and people like him. And now he's he gone to the, he's gone to the Madrid team and he's got the number 23, the Michael Jordan number, which you know they're implying that this is going to lead him to come play in the states at yes. some day. And yes. they're talking about Parch Spice and that's amazingly wealthy. So I, I watch this thing and I'm, I'm trying to learn more about David Beckham and, and they say and then uh, Brian. Gumbel says, and now a disturbing story also from the other side of the pond. Hmm. So I stay with the show. Mm -hmm. And he says, undoubtedly, you've seen our next, next guest's actions at sporting events, especially if you live <laughs> in Europe. And it's the dude who runs naked everywhere. Wow. And he is the most likable guy you ever want to meet. He's so great and he's so funny. And because it's HBO, mm -hmm. they just they they pixelate out his his D and Bs, mm -hmm. but they do show his flabby ass. Oh, it's so funny. And they, they <laughs> what makes him, it great is he has a horrible body. <laughs> they show him he's he's done this at Wimbledon, at at the British Open, at at the uh, at the European soccer matches. Mm -hmm. uh, he did it at a horse race where he had to dress like a woman, and they, they show him climbing over a fence and with like this black dress on and yeah. a big hat, right. taking the breakaway dress on, and then they're saying now that he's sponsored, that he has like whatever a Golden Palace dot com. Yeah, Mike, he swoosh on his back at one point. Yeah, well, that's not paid for though. Oh, really? No, he did that as a tribute to <laughs> Nike because the guy who streaks in the Nike commercials. Oh, that's is, right. It's a parody. Oh. Yes, of him doing it. Right, right. So, 
You know, in their in their very own highfalutin HBO way, they were trying to pin this guy out as just a total retard. Right. And they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it because he was he's just so cool. likable. Mm -hmm. And you can't help but watch this and laugh. And that's the great thing about TiVo is that maybe <laughs> yeah. ten times in a row when they were going through his highlight thing, where they were just being, you know, they pretend disgusted like, this is so awful, but we're going to show it to you, of course. All the stuff he's done. It's a great highlight reel. And they said that he's done it over 300 times. He was, you know, you have to be a likable guy. And he was so likable. And then they had his mother on. And his mother was funny, too. You know, and when she's talking about dropping him on his head. And, then and really dropping him on his head when he Literally. was a baby. And they're saying, well, you know, how do you get the money to go to these things? You don't have a job. He says, well, I've got, you know, my mates. Right. Uh, pay. They, and raise, then, they raise money for him in the pub. Maybe. And then they got his friends in the bar. And all of them typical British guys with, like, bad teeth. <laughs> but they say, they're saying, there's one guy, how much have you paid? Oh, about uh, 2,500 pounds. Another guy says, oh, I spent about 2,000 pounds. And the, and, the, you know, and the reporter is sitting there and Crickle is going, you spent thousands of dollars just to, to finance this. Do you think it's worth it? And they go, oh, yes. He's given us so many giggles. But the reporter was cool about it, too. Bernard Goldberg, because yeah. when he's got the, when he's doing his stand-up, he's got the guy running, running back, <laughs> back in front of him naked. That's right. It's Brian Gumbel who's got the attitude. Oh, Brian yeah, Gumbel's got the attitude oh, for everybody. Brian yeah. Gumbel who called the guy an idiot and a moron right. and how, how low our society has gone. Uh, Meanwhile, right. you know, hello, McFly. Yeah. Brian Gumbel, you're here complaining about it, yet... Right, it's a gigantic segment on your show, and and they asked him why does he do it, and he said he did it because he did it on a on a lark uh, as a joke. He was he was drunk. He was drunk, of and course. then when he heard the forty thousand, sixty-five thousand, sixty-five thousand fans yelling, scream, he said it, it's better than sex. And then they said, then, then the guy says, and when's the second time he did it? He said forty minutes later. <laughs> forty minutes later, yeah. he went back out that and did it again. Then he went back in the stands <laughs> oh, and okay. came back down. Now that's see, now that's British humor. Yeah. That I get. I get and they love him. I mean, they absolutely go nuts they do. over the guy. Sure. He's good. He'd be, you know what? He'd be a good manager for Infinity Broadcast. <laughs> He's just the type of breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. And, well, maybe with his, with his clothes off, he's not. But with his clothes on, he's the type of guy that we need to come in here and just... Well, you know, streaking is, uh, I, I think, a decidedly American thing. I think years and years ago, yeah. we all come from the streaking era. Uh, you know, I was going to high school when streaking was at its absolute most popular. And, right. and you know what? I think it needs to make a comeback. I think that, you know, in this day and age of, of athletes getting in trouble and the controversy and the fact that we have pampered athletes, go to a sporting event. And, you know, I mean, it's not that big a deal. Right? Right. Don't take it so seriously. Yeah, but here's the thing over here, the difference between over here and over there. If it happens over here, the, the way the networks run it now, they don't even show it. They, they, yeah, exactly. They, they say... Uh, a man is doing something tasteless on the field, and we are not going to show it to you. Meanwhile, if you watch TV over in Britain, mm -hmm. they got full frontal on the guy. They got the guy holding his hands up in the air. You're seeing yeah. his his nuts. You're seeing his you know his his D. You're seeing. And there's one where he bends over and actually spreads his oh. cheeks. And, there was and, one where and, it, and he had a sign on his back. It was painted on his back. It said 19th hole, and it pointed <laughs> down towards his butt. He, I think, I, I saw one clip where. It looked like he was wearing a jock too. Oh, that was at the French Open. Like he was, he knew he wouldn't get the camera time if he had the D and B, so he wore a he wore a jock. <laughs> and it was a a, a flesh colored jock. Yeah, right. Salmon, salmon colored jock. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, and, and he does. You're right. You know, they don't even throw show uh, when they throw a beach ball on the on the field now at a baseball game. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah, you know? No, uh, someone's acting inappropriately. Now, listen, I understand if it's you know two drunk guys in Chicago jumping out of the field and and beating up the first base coach of the yeah, Royals. That's what we get now. That's what happens. Right. You know, you don't get a guy that just streaks. It's just anger. Yep. Yeah. And, and you know, unfortunately, in this corporate environment that we live in, in, in the radio world, mm -hmm. if we were today to get on the radio and say, you know, we'd love to be streaked, to have some people run by this window and, and streak us, mm -hmm. that undoubtedly, no, well, now that I've said it, mm -hmm. someone from the legal office will call and say, you're you know, encouraging people to do that. We are not. That's terribly wrong. You can't encourage anybody to run by the window at 10800 Main Street in Fairfax, Virginia today and take their clothes off and run outside the window. You Let me say again, no, we, we do not encourage anyone at all to streak. No. In front of our studio. Yeah. We don't. You never heard that from us. Hi, Charles. You're Hi. really not encouraging anyone to break any county law either. Is what you're doing. Right. We're not. Right. The county has standards that we can't have people break. Right. That's, That's right. right. That's Absolutely. Right. And we wouldn't want them to do We're that. not. Enough said. Yeah. We're not. So, so don't do it. Okay. <laughs>
pupils are really dilated right now. <laughs> <laughs> so don't do it. Um, here's news. Here's news for you. <laughs> oh, did you find it, Rob? This is a good song I like. Oh, no. I know, I know I we've know, got I it know somewhere. It. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> look at it, look at it. Hello, everyone. This is your Action News reporter with all the news that is news across the nation. On Let me just say to all you guys listening to the show right now who aren't going to do that today, th- th- don't look at this song as a sign that we're asking for this. Not encouraging. I'm going to at the supermarket. There seems to have been some disturbance here. Pardon me, sir. Did you see what happened? Yeah, I did. I was standing over by the tomatoes, and here he comes, running through the pole, baby, yeah. through the fruits and vegetables, naked as a jaybird. I, I hollered over to Ethel. I said, don't look, Ethel. You get me, Sabian. Tell him Sabian's not here in 20 minutes. You die. I know you've played a lot of records as a disc jockey. Is this at least in the top five of the worst you ever had to play, seriously? I liked it. Did you really? I liked it. I, hate I don't want to talk to anyone else but Sabian. Hi, Tim. Tim, on this show, you got to pick your poison. If there's Sabian here... You gotta pick your poison. It's either this or yeah. it's the hustle. <laughs> you gotta decide which, you know, you draw the line in the sand. And, and that was the end of the story about this guy that he's recording a, a, a British version, a remake of, of The Street. And that's where I started it, you know, say, okay, calm down a little bit. You know, because really, it's like you like them when they're. They're just the old streakers. Yeah, you know, right. When they start getting into the whole thing about making a record, it's uh, you know it's going to get crazy. Hey, Amen. Now, uh, listen, uh, news to everybody here, everybody on the show. Uh, well, first, let me just say, thank the Lord, thank Jesus Christ, and thank God himself. And this I really mean from my heart, that Saturday night at 8 p.m., I'll be able to turn on ESPN and watch live from Tokyo your Tampa Bay Buccaneers against your fighting New York Jets. And Monday night, I'll be able to turn on and watch... Oh, and here's what it'll sound like, incidentally. The, the Jets-Tampa uh, Bay game. I'm from I'm Tokyo. I'm hoping that they use American oh, announcers. Yeah. But there's a chance it'll sound like this. And then Monday night, I'm going to be watching your Green Bay Packers fighting against your Kansas City Chiefs. It's back. Football is back. For you, I, I love it this time of year. Because, not because I'm as into it as you are, because it just makes you so happy. It elevates my mood. It makes you easier to live with. Yeah, and, you know, I, I'm the type of dick that watches it even into the fourth quarter when they've got the guys in who have no chance of making the team. That's why you're somebody that goes into the fantasy football draft pretty well armed because you and, watch so much preseason football. And, Mike, this is what I am getting to now. Tomorrow on the show, we will have our draft lottery. Right. There are ten sealed envelopes. And, you know, can I say, uh, as somebody who is uh, on the fringe of the Fantasy Football League, it's about time. Because really, frankly, I think for the last few years, I think it's been fixed. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last few years, we've done it based on the, the record the previous year. But right. we have new guys coming into the league this year. Uh, and we're not, it's not going to be a keeper league. So you we're can't... a bi-coastal league this year. Yeah, I know. Big Gum Jim's playing from Los Angeles. Wow. And uh, uh, my, my son's going to be playing from down in South Carolina. Going to be well represented. So uh, all the guys are coming in tomorrow. And uh, you're going to be given uh, your choice of an unmarked envelope. Mm-hmm. And uh, you will find out where you draft. Very good. And this year's uh, fantasy. Uh, John, who do you think will be the hottest draft pick this year? Who, who do you think? Uh, who do your early? If what are I your got, early signs? If I got the number one pick, yeah, I'm gonna tell you, I've already decided. Okay. His name you is won't. Mike Vick, and I am not asking Michael him. Vick. I had him last. Year. I would take Mike Vick number one right now in the NFL mm-hmm. over anybody, followed by because I always would take a quarterback first, Donovan McNabb, then you know Brett Favre. I'm gay for Brett. You'd go Favre. Brett Favre again? He never, he never, he never fails to. He, sometimes he throws. Well, he was a little banged up last year. Sometimes he throws a retarded interception, but Brett Favre is always good for three thousand yards and twenty-five touchdowns. Always. Yeah, you know, for me, it's easy. It's a no-brainer. Kerry Collins. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Kerry Collins would be a steal, like in the fourth round. I know. I'm not kidding you. You know me and the Giants. So anyway, uh, tomorrow we're having the draft, and I think at some point uh, we don't want to do this on the air. I mean, we, we'll do the draft. You know, there. seriously, who I might take if I got a, I take a, a tight end this year, a good tight end, like Bam Bam from the Giants. I like him. You would take Jeremy Shockey if you had the number one overall pick? I doubt it. Yeah, I don't think so either. Uh, you would check the email that Broyhill has sent everybody. The price has gone up this year. So, yeah. The price has gone up. How much is it this year? 
178? 187, something like that. Yeah, man, yeah. I'm dyslexic, folks, so thank you. And the reason that the price has gone up is because Charles is the commissioner this year. Yeah, well, I'm mm -hmm. glad he's back. And uh, $17 Charlie fee. And because Charlie's the commissioner, he's decided that each of us will pay a little bit of his entry fee. Right. It's uh, 178.56. There you go. <laughs> um, you know, Charlie's a good commissioner. I, I like the way he does it. I'm glad he's doing it. With no, no offense to the kangaroo commissioner of last week, <laughs> last year, Rob Spiewak, who really would change rules week Hold by it. week. Hold many it. Times, Hold many it. times on Hold my it. on my insistence. <laughs> I wanted to leave the rules as they were. Yeah, and John, come in here. Before the season started, season, week two, I sent out an email. Any changes that you want made to the rules, let me know because this is it. Which really doesn't explain why we were changing rules and scores into week five. Yeah. Because it was so retarded the way that the rules were set up If last you had year. looked at the rules before the season, you could have spotted the retardation. Well, everybody thought that the rules were going to be the same as they'd been for the previous five I years. Think Rob had I think Rob I, I will speak for Mr. Spiewak and say that he made a valiant effort. Thank you. But unfortunately, he's he, crooked. He was, he, was <laughs> trying, he was trying to accommodate too many voices that were just too much of a pain in the and ass. I, and I, will say and I want things, I believe, with Mr. Broyhill at the helm again. Oh, he won't he be will rule at all. He will rule with an iron fist. You know something? I accept any rules if they are the rules and they don't change. Last year, the changes were and my, BS. I have to say, I did take advantage of Rob that I would, I would occasionally call Rob yeah, and, I, and say... We're your buddies. And I would say, hey, dude, look, at this guy ran a punt back 89 yards. I got like four points for it. <laughs> What's up with this? And Rob would say... Well, that's the scoring. I said, that's the scoring. I said last year, a, p a punt return for 89 yards would have been worth 40 points. Right. So I said, please go back and, and change that. And then I know Charlie had many issues, issues as well. Yeah, and this will be exciting because there are 10 teams this year. Mm -hmm. yeah. 10 voices that won't be heard. <laughs> Nine, because you'll listen to yourself, of course. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, draft is uh, tomorrow. Everybody will right. come in and get oh, I'll bring the Bloody Marys. Get your on. Oh, no, that's on the draft show, Mike. That's what you think. And uh, <laughs> we'll pick the order tomorrow and find everybody will find out. I'll have Bloody Marys at lunch. And uh, remember, the, the name of our league last year was Buzz Has the First Pick. Right. right. Because actually Buzz lucked out into getting the first pick last year. Uh, what are we going to name the league this year? And I think we ought to have team name changes. Required? I'm, I'm keeping my I same like, name. I like mine, the, the, the DAs, the dumbasses. And the anchors. I don't like sea dogs. Well, change it then. All right, I will. Good, change it. Go on, you can go, do that. Go on the website and change it. Get yourself a new crazy logo. Yeah, yeah I'm going to get a new logo. No, that takes too much time. I'll stay with the sea dog. <laughs> yeah, okay. So that's uh, that's tomorrow. <laughs> we'll I'm be beginning doing... my traditional enthusiastic participation in get fantasy football. <laughs> there you go. Hello, Donna Mike Show. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Now ah, you're on the air. Hey, Donna. How are you guys doing? Hey, we're doing great. Hey, uh, I just want to tell you guys that you helped me get through a tough time last month. Uh, you guys were even on Best Of Show, and it was just great to hear you guys. Um, my father was dying from cancer, and uh, just hearing you guys' voice let me take your mind off of it. And I don't want to put damper on the show because you guys show's kick ass, but hey, it was really nice to hear you guys. And just thanks for everything. All right, keep up the good stuff. Wow. All right, thank you, my friend. Hey, hey, nice how was how your dad? What's that? How was your oh your dad passed? Yeah, he passed. You know, and I'll tell you the true injustice here, and I, and I really mean this, the fact that a, a great man like your father is dead, yet these Infinity executives continue to live, <laughs> they live. To live and, and there's just no justice and in the world. And he off the life, too. So. Carrots off the life, That's why this guy's way to go. Thanks, guys. Good you. That's All a very right. nice compliment. Thank you. See you later. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> that is the nicest thing people can say to us. Mm -hmm. Thank you very hard. Uh, hello, uh, Don and Mike show. Hello. Thank you. Oop. Sorry. Oops. Hello. That went well. <laughs> Hey, Don Mike. Yeah, oh, there he is. I got him back. Hello. Yeah, I'm right here. Hey, Don, um, if you're going to be watching the Buccaneers game live Saturday at 8 o'clock at night, I would like to take money on that game. I know it's, it's a tape. I know it's a tape. It's going to be live on ESPN2 at 5 in the morning when I will be watching it, and then you, we can enjoy it together. Does that mean he's going to be 5 like the, the morning before? At, at 5 o'clock, actually, on Sunday morning or Monday morning? Um, no, Saturday on, morning on ESPN2. Sat Saturday well, morning, because they play in Tokyo. It couldn't be taped if it was going to be on. Um, yeah, I mean, if it was live, it would be nutty. So you're not going to get up at 5 a.m. and watch it on uh, Sunday morning? You, you, Saturday morning. No, but, I'll wait and watch it at 8 o'clock on Saturday night. I, you know, I, I know it's tape delayed, but what I'll do is I will shield myself from uh, the constant bombardment of the scores that I'm sure are going to be coming all day on Saturday. <laughs> right, right. When I watch it on Saturday night, no, you know, it's like friends. You, know, they have, right. you haven't seen it before, it's new to you. New to you. you got to TiVo it. No, I'm not going to TiVo it. I want to watch hey, it. Hey, but, but listen, if you TiVo it on ESPN2, 
You could watch it earlier at, at your convenience, like after you got up. No, I want to watch it. I want to watch it at the same time as everybody else. Plus, it gets me out of Saturday night with my wife. I agree. That I've got, you know, I've got to say, honey, it started. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the official end of our socializing now for the next seven months. I'm just surprised at that. I, I with the, the the passionate fandom that you have, I'm surprised that you're going to be able to wait. No, and here's the thing: you have to get up at four thirty. You got to get your coffee. You you got to, you know, I don't know about you, but I don't like to drink at five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you mean that's what time it comes on? Yeah. Oh hell, I'll be able to watch that. No, so what I want to do? I want to, uh, you know, go through the day on Saturday, and I've got this looking forward to me at, yeah. at, at eight o'clock, and and just sit down and, and watch it at the time that it's regularly broadcast when most people who aren't as fanatic as that guy would be watching it. I wonder if I can talk one of my bar owner buddies into, like, opening at 5 o'clock. staying open. Hello, We're staying Don. open. Don and Mike show. Hello. Donald. Michael. Yeah. yeah, asshole. Donald, I think you're absolutely crazy taking a quarterback in the first round. You yeah, have no. to take, You have to take a running back. That's okay, true. and when you get past uh, Ricky Williams and Marshall Falk, exactly who do you take? But Danian Tomlinson, the guy... Listen, I'm not, this is going to turn into a dumb sports Here we show. Go. <laughs> I'm not, not going to do it. We've not even had the draft yet. <laughs> Bust our balls after we pick yeah. the players. I don't know anybody this year. I'm so unplugged this year. I don't know anybody. You'll buy the magazine. You'll get the cheat sheets from the Internet. i got, I got another sport on my mind right now. I know. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, they look good last night, huh? Oh, well, you're following it, aren't you? And, uh, you know, you're not a baseball fan, but you're sure aware of what's going on. And I noticed that... Uh, Nine to two. I noticed Giambi came through on the West Coast for the Yankees. Yeah, as, as they Jason beat, Giambi had a big game. And as they beat I the believe Eagles. Clemens pitched a complete game, uh, so it's... Uh, it's three three games out, two and a half games out. I'm sorry. And how did Oakland do yesterday? Anybody? Oakland uh, lost, uh, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's too bad. Isn't that a shame? That's Rest too bad. Still, so, uh, have the the lead in the wild card. Hello, Don Mike Show. Hello, uh, hello. Chicken bar, chicken bar, chicken bar, boy. <laughs> Happy Thursday. Okay. And to you. Right. I've also got Buzz uh, watching very closely the uh, the Associated Press wire as we have now. Approximately 27 minutes to the trading deadline. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Hey, guys. How you doing? Great news. The Red Sox have decided to trade everybody. We've given up this year. The Red Sox have traded <laughs> everybody. Now, why would well. they do that? Because the Why would they do something like that when they have one of the best teams they've had exactly. in years? Exactly. Because they know that they're going to lose it at the end. They know. It's just the way they are. They're not going to make the playoffs again. They're going to disappoint the very loyal fans again. They're going to be the abusive husband on cops. And once again, you and all the Red Sox fans are going to be the wife that doesn't press charges. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. The AP has just reported Fenway Park has just fallen down. Stop. <laughs> Both of you stop. Hello. Don, did you hear that the Eagles forgot to install uh, water fountains in their new stadium? They have to go back through and, like, tear up the wall. No, 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 no. Listen, I don't think they forgot. I think that this is a smart move by the Eagles. I believe they're going to be charging <laughs> for, the, for the opportunity to use the water, the water fountains there. Laugh if you will. Walt Disney used the same trick when he opened Disneyland. No, well, no water fountains. No water fountains? Because you can sell Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. That's and right. uh, God forbid Dan Snyder hears about that. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. And, you know, Dan Snyder, the owner of the Redskins, his, his massive plan is still, and he's going to tell you that the reason he wants to put a dome on Redskins Stadium, mm -hmm. FedEx Field, mm -hmm. is that he wants to get a Super Bowl in Washington. Right. So that it'll be climate controlled. And he's also going to tell you that he wants to put a dome on the stadium for right. the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And then install right next to every seat in the stadium a, uh, a little box, right. which will be coin-fed. <laughs> and here's exactly what, what you do. You, you put the money in, and then you have to put the oxygen mask on. Right? Yes. Because once you're in the stadium, then you have to pay for the air, <laughs> for air that you are breathing. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. That's the ultimate plan. See, what you do is you get them all in there like rats in a cage, then <laughs> you put a steel, a big steel cover on top of it, and you shut off the air. Then, then when they start, <clears throat> that's when the usher comes down the aisle and says to you, to your right, you'll see the wonderful... Washington Redskins 
H, well, it's not H2O. It's uh, O. It's just oxygen. Oh, yeah. it's just O. O2. Yeah. Oh, the oxygen mask. O2. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you cheer for a play, you go, yay! <laughs> and, you know, you just you can only let so much of it cheer out to, to, before you have to grab another hit. Well, unless, unless you have club seats. Right. Mm -hmm. Or unless you're in the, well, a box seat. Because club you seats, get, you will be issued a tank. What you get there, what you get there is the Don Imus oxygen tank. Right. The thing where the little little mm -hmm. things go into your nose. Mm -hmm. So you can actually speak and converse. And right. Not stop. And talk. And you, you like put that, that like scuba diver thing on your back that's got the two big tanks of oxygen tanks. Mm -hmm. as, you, as you're sitting enjoying the well, small tank so you can buy refills. But hey, it's going to finance the team so they'll, they'll be able to go out and get a winner. <laughs> they'll be able to go out and buy a winning team. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, they're all the same. I, I mean, all the teams are the same. And even, you know, my beloved uh, Packers, mm -hmm. as much as you love the Red Sox, I love the Packers, have my whole life. Jesus Christ, I'm wearing my Packers uh, Hawaiian shirt today and my, my Packers khaki pants. My khaki, uh, <laughs> in your khaki pants. Are you wearing <laughs> Packers pants? Uh, uh, khaki shorts. You got, those are Packers khaki shorts? Yeah, Packers are, khakis. Yeah. You see the, uh, the, the discreet Packers logo? That is very nice. <laughs> but they send me stuff all the time, the Packers. I'm on the email list. Okay. And, and every piece of email that I get, whether it's to buy a brick at Lambeau Field. Right, buy a, a lawnmower. Uh, a Packer tractor, whatever it is, their whole come on is always, and remember, Every dime that you spend, if you buy every jersey you you buy, mm -hmm. goes towards the Packers having a better team. That's it. And, and the line there is because they're publicly owned. Uh -huh. But what they don't tell you is that, like, if you buy a Brett Favre jersey, the way the NFL is set up, all the teams split the money evenly from yeah. that. It, it's something called NFL properties. Right. right. So I'm sure that there are some things that the Packers keep the money exclusively from, mm -hmm. like Dan Snyder would keep. The you know the air and 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 Jeff Lurie would would keep the water concession. You know the best thing about that Packers shirt that you're wearing. What's that? Is the little hibachi with the wieners on the it. The grill. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, the that's, brats. That's the brats on there. The brats. That's that's the best right there. Yeah. The brats. <laughs> Aaron brats. Don and Mike show. Hello. Don Mike. But still, even with all of that bitching, I can't wait. Hey, Buzzy, oh, no. how you doing? I'm all right. How are you? Wait for it to start. I'm doing well. Hey, I wanted to comment about that guy that called in uh, about the water fountains in the Eagles Stadium. Yeah. If you've ever seen any of the fans in the 700 level at the vet, you probably wouldn't want to drink out of the water fountain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but remember now, now this is no longer going to be the old My vet. tongue itches. Well, this, is gonna, <laughs> this is going to be the brand new of Franklin Field. Uh, Lincoln Financial. Uh, Lincoln, excuse me, Lincoln Financial. It is brand new. Yeah, but it's the same old riffraff going to be up in the upper <laughs> level. That's right. Yeah. Same old riffraff. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right about that. Uh, one more call. Here's uh, a guy calling in uh, oh, Green Bay. Dennis. Hey, hey, Don and Mike. How's it? Yeah, hey there. Hey, here's the, here's the thing that's coming next. As soon as you walk in the stadium, everybody's going to be fitted with blinders that slide open and close like little shutters automatically. And as long as you keep pumping quarters in, just like the peep show, they'll stay open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any way to maximize profit. <laughs> All right. Absolutely. Hey, you paid for your seat, but now you've got to pay more to see the game. That's right. <laughs> just because you've got a comfortable place to put your butt doesn't mean you're going to be able to watch the game. No. That's right. Your ticket, see, that's just the cover charge. But we have done. Well, hold on. We went to Packers.com and we did find out the Packers do. They don't. Have to put the money from the NFL properties for the Vince Lombardi personal lubricant <laughs> well, that's or, or for the Paul Horning sexual device uh, <laughs> for this show will be called the C-Ring. Fantastic. Very so uh, if you want either the Lombardi lubricant or the uh, Horning C-Ring, right. all that money goes directly to your Green Bay Packers. We should point out this is the second reference to a C-Ring on the show so far today. Okay, keep counting, Mike. Yes. <laughs> hey, guys. There'll be more. See you later. It's a theme. <laughs> See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> We're up uh, on the break. Let's start today's show with uh, the secret sound. Yeah. And uh, your chance to win a thousand bucks. You could be with this impossible sound. Well, in the morning, think about it. It could be the sound of someone actually putting a quarter into the machine mm -hmm. at FedEx Field to turn on their oxygen. Right. There you uh, go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. Can anybody break it down? Mike, Mike, give me a quarter. I don't have any quarters. What are we going to do? Give me 25 pennies. I don't have 25 pennies. We're going to have to call the paramedic, but he charges too. Mike, give me, give me a quarter. Give me a quarter. Here, buddy, here's a quarter. Cash. Oh. Oh, my God. Just in time. Man. Yeah. You know, actually, you know what it is, really? I'll tell you. It's the sound of another seven and ninth season. <laughs> oh. That's
that's what that. Come on now, you got to be more optimistic than that. Mike, that is my optimistic projection. Uh oh, watch out. All right, clear these lines. Call I'm, one. I disagree. Call one hundred right now. We'll be right back. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. Uh, five o'clock west. And Mike. Right, right. Let's go to uh, caller 100. Start the show. Got a winner here. Oh, God. What line looks good? Well, they all look so good. All right. Hello, Don and Mike show. Is it past 100? See, that is Pujo, which is the ones on the left. Uh -huh. The ones on the right. Uh, yeah, listen, you're the 100th caller. Seriously? Nope. Kidding. <laughs> Hi, Don and Mike show. Hi, can I be caller 100? Can you be caller 100? Am I caller 100? Can you? Yeah. If you could be caller 100, would you? Would you? Yes. <laughs> okay, you win. Yay. Uh, well, what's your name, darling? Selena. And where are you from? I'm from Philadelphia. All right, now listen to this. 15 free Slurpees and a 7-Eleven convenient card. Cool. Power up your thirst with a new Slurpee flavor. The Mountain Dew Live Wire. Oh, man, I bet that's delicious. Yeah. Available Ow. this summer at participating 7-Eleven. You have about five in your head. Clean blows off. <laughs> uh, plus uh, a SunTrust <laughs> Summer Nights Lawn Pass for two. Good for up to 12 select shows, including lawn chair rentals and premier parking. Mm -hmm. This summer at Nissan Pavilion for information or to buy your own for... Just $100. Mm -hmm. Go to NissanPavilion.com. It's a bargain. Now you're going to uh, play for $1,000 here with a, a common everyday sound. Okay. Are you ready? We'll, yeah. we'll play you the sound, give you 15 seconds to think about it, and I think you're going to love the new twist that we've come up with from Mike singing. No <laughs> longer, I can't wait. No longer are we limiting Mike to the world of uh, R&B and hip-hop. Mm -hmm. Oh, you think you know what boys like? That song wasn't R&B. No, no. That the, Yesterday was just the beginning, right? Oh. Oh, okay. Of the entire, and then you, this didn't was not on the air today, but Charles Broyhill, our producer, came in with five different uh, sealed envelopes for Mike Ooh. to pick, yep. out, to pick I out can't wait. today's lyrics. So uh, please don't answer until Mike sings like I don't know who it is and uh, Bonnie Tyler. <laughs> oh, you got that one. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Okay, so, uh, stand by. Okay. Caller, name this sound. And there. There it is. Now you get your, your 15 seconds to think about it. Okay. So, you know, the music's going now, and, and please don't answer it. And Godspeed, good luck. Once upon a time, I was falling in love, but now I'm only falling apart. There's nothing I can do. It's a total eclipse of the heart. Yeah. Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you. It was. Okay. Um, I, can't, I can't wait till you get gin and juice by Snoop. <laughs> I'm, I'm so dying, so dying to tell you. All of the, well, that that would be, you know, hip-hop, but right. all of the non-temporary mm -hmm. songs Very that good. have been selected. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, okay, here you go now for $1,000. Yes. What's the sound? Um, I think it's the lid of an aspirin bottle being closed. The lid of an aspirin bottle being closed. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're sorry. Nope, it has nothing to do with buzz in. I know you're sorry to hear this. With any pharmaceuticals. Oh. Uh, here's my guess for no today. No meds. And buzz it closing, closing, closing a C-ring. Closing a C-ring. Yeah. Just consistent, consistent. It's consistent. <laughs> no, uh, thank you, though. Don't forget that every guest is a, a clue, clue for you. For you. It's a clue uh, for you. <laughs> All right, today's show is uh, jammed. Uh, I normally don't tell you what's coming up in advance, but I think today's so good I have to tell you. Uh, Dr. Germ is coming back on the show. You might remember him as Dr. Duty. Oh, yeah, wonderful. Oh, God, that's a gross segment. In a previous <laughs> life, and uh, right here I have a copy of uh, the hottest book in America. And what has turned out to be a, a failed movie, yes. but nonetheless, it's, it's Joe's book club. It is us. The movie's a hit. Uh, the the movie came in fifth place this weekend. I know, but yeah. the movie made twenty million dollars, and they were very happy with it. And they call it a that's success. the spin. That's the spin. Mm -hmm. You know, it made twenty million dollars. Oh, we're very happy. The movie might win an Academy Award for Best Picture. Yeah, know? and and so did Gandhi. 
Okay. <laughs> I love Gandhi. It was a great movie. I crap on Gandhi. Oh, my oh. goodness. I mean, Come not, on now. He would not, never do that to not you. Not the man, but oh. the movie. I mean, well, and maybe the man. I don't, he, he pissed me off. I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, today, uh, Seabiscuit, uh, Joe's Book Club. See this. Yay. Wonderful. Coming up, plus, uh, plus something else. So, so we got to get to stuff that we didn't get to uh, uh, over the last couple of days. We started it yesterday and never really got into it. It's this uh, Cosmo sex thing. What guys are really aching for. It's already hinky. From Cosmopolitan. Yeah, we already are, are doubting this. Uh, hold on to your headboard. Oh. Cosmo got over 15,000 hot-blooded boys to spill their covert. Sexual desires. Wow. So here we go. Wow. Wow. Uh, let's see. Sex. Now please answer. And I'll tell you if your answers made the list. I'm not going to look in advance. But one of the questions was, what's her sexiest outfit? Now I would say, you know, based on my relations with uh, my wife, nothing. I, I think when my wife comes into the room wearing a, a real hot nightgown or something, my first instinct is to say, take it off. Mm -hmm. It's like going into a toy store and being told you can have anything you want. But that, that but that's not really the answer, though. Because you have to mention an outfit. You have to make, it has to be some outfit, some article of clothing. Does All it? right, then, then I would say um, her bikini. When we're on the beach, her bikini. Mike. So hard. So, I don't want to hear about that. You know what I like now, and it's I think it's already. <laughs> you get it? You just said it so hard. Well, it is all the time during the show, um, and I think this 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 fashion statement may have passed, but the thong underwear pulled up over the line of the jeans. Mm -hmm. and, and buzz. I, I'm going to say lingerie that you can see through in places. You know. Where the, the the key parts are covered, but the other parts are revealed. You mean like where there's holes where the nipples go? Well, no, 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 no. Just the opposite. The the good parts would be covered, but there would be you know it would be diaphanous. It would be sort of see through, and you could see. Rob, other things. let him go. He says things because he wants to appear sexy. And Rob, I know your answer is that <laughs> it's the Hannibal Lecter mask, right? Yeah, and the World War One German helmet. <laughs> oh, 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 German helmet. The one with the spike coming out of it, Rob. Oh, guys, <laughs> we are all wrong. Oh dear oh, me. Dear. The number one sexiest outfit among America's men, halter top with tight pants. Well, That's okay, number. I accept that. I, I like a good halter okay. top. Number two know. is a fitted business suit. Number three is a sundress. Number four, jeans and a wife beater. Yeah. All right. Hey, you know, it's all subjective. I, yeah. None of those things that were listed I thought were out of line. Okay. I mean, I know what they mean also. I, I don't know if you guys, with the, the fitted business suit, like yeah. the Armani suit that's like cut really well that, that a woman looks hot in. It's yeah, awesome. The right she, woman, nothing underneath. Sure. Or she looks business-like yet at the same time you'd like to jump her. We all like this segment. The man over in the news cubicle <laughs> loves this segment. <laughs> You're going about your everyday business when, bam, some girl pulls a move that totally turns you on. What did she do? For me, mm -hmm. and not, I'm not looking at the answers, I guess it would be, well, beyond just massaging her own, you know, uh -huh. orbs, uh, probably a, a very deep look into the I'm big into eye mm -hmm. contacts. It would be a very deep look into the eyes. Good one. Touching the arm. Buzz. I, I was going to say touching. That would be my choice. Touching me, you know, anywhere. <laughs> okay. Rob? Uh, flashing a bit of leg. <laughs> Some leg. <laughs> All right. Rob. Rob goes back to the 1940s. <laughs> well, I she's wearing a Betty Grable sweater. It shows a little leg. <laughs> By golly. All right, I got number one. I think you can count this. Mm -hmm. you give me a lusty look with her eyes. Mm -hmm. That's good. Number two. What turn she want? This is so stupid. Bending over to fill her cup at the water cooler. Well, you know, now we're getting into the BS thing Hold where on. it's made up by a writer. Mike accidentally touched me while walking through a crowd. 
Now, does that count for your touching? Or yeah, I mean, it's touching. Like, like you say something funny, and you go, you know, I really. And there's the. I mean, I got the spot. It's right here. Here's the form. Right here. It's not really right accidental, there. and that's. I mean, for me, accidental wouldn't be good enough. No, it has to be. Yeah, has to be on purpose. And uh, number four, it, when she absently strokes her skin or twists her hair, or twirls her hair without yeah. knowing that I'm. All right now, now I'm very convinced that this might have been done by writers. Now. And here's his hot tip from Lyle, age 29. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lyle. <laughs> Fly me. I love that God I want you gaze. Especially if she shifts her eyes downward after a few seconds, then glances up and bites her bottom lip. Mm. Oh, okay. Now Come it's, on. it's like, All right. it's like, you know what that's like? It's like it was made up in a writer's room. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Next question. You've just met a hot woman. And I think we're all going to have to, with the exception of Mike, we're all going to have to pretend we're not married for this one. All right. Okay, so we're speaking. Oh, boy. As, you must. It, we, yeah, we're speaking just, all right. you know, as cavemen. Yeah, all right. If you've just met a hot woman, do you want to do her ASAP? You bet your ass I do. Absolutely. Yes. Number one answer. This is bull ass. No, I'd rather go on a date or two so I could get to know her better. <laughs> ah. There'll be plenty of time for that. Come no. on. Number two answer. <laughs> no. I like building up the anticipation. Oh, come on. So I'd wait four or five dates. All right. Yeah, you know, let's remember the source of this. This oh, is man. being written Number for three. women. Number three. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and yes, of course, is number three. I had to throw that yeah. out. No explanation. And, and hold on. Yeah. There's a number pig. four. There's a pig man. There's, there's a number four. four. Yes. But I think she was easy. <laughs> That's true. So you combine three and four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You combine three and four, and you come up with the number one answer. because it No, but wait. No, four is not right. Yes, it wouldn't necessarily. That, that's not a lock. Anyway, mm. you wouldn't necessarily think that. I, I mean, I don't no. think you would. Chemistry. Here's his, his, hot, his hot tip. Oh, and I like the way they put it, his hot tip. Uh -huh. it, wouldn't his hot tip really be? Yeah, yeah right. His hot tip. I get your hot tip. <laughs> this is from uh, Kevin, age 31. Kevin? <laughs> I feel like a traitor to my gender saying this, but putting the brakes on, getting busy, putting the brakes on, getting busy, mm -hmm. really pays off. Faggot. Do the guy a favor and throw him a bone while he waits. Allude to all the dirty things you'd like to do to him eventually. Uh, 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 come off. Uh, who, who, how old was the guy? 31. 31. That's a lie. All right, now we're moving to fiery four. Throw a bone. See, so a girl's sitting there telling you what she'd like to do to you, and the guy's like, mm -hmm, can't wait till next month. Fiery foreplay. <laughs> what kind of kiss revs your engine? What kind of kiss men revs your engine? I'll tell you something I don't go for, hmm. generally, is just... Like the saliva, the the messy, the, the you know. I I like the little, the little stuff. Mm -hmm. That's what I go for. Mike, I like really the lower lip yeah. action. I like lower lip action on either. Per, How would you describe that? Like kind of a bite of the lower lip or something like okay. that. Not not really, you know, not like okay. but I mean just kind of a you know where you're really getting into each other's lips a little bit. And buzz, uh, sucking or gently biting each other's lips. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Rob, R Buzz and I have done that together. <laughs> yes. I like destroyer. Kiss Destroyer? No, it's not. No, no you're picking kind of. the Kiss album. Thank you, Rob. Uh, what type of Kiss revs your engine? Uh, let me see. Number one, deep sensual with intense tongue action. Mm. Yeah. Number two, okay, this is you guys. I think a bit rough with love nips and sucking. Yeah, all right, that's fine. And I would be uh, number three here, gentle and sweet with minimal tongue. Mm-hmm. Uh, his hot tip mm -hmm. comes from Trent, age 28. Trent! Press your mouth against mine. Part my lips by running your tongue along the edges. Dart the tip of your tongue in and out of my mouth. As if you're hungry for me. Mm -hmm. Who wrote the, These guys are... These guys are all on Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. Absolutely. Oh, good. Okay. What is, what is your steamiest... Erogenous zone, besides the obvious, meaning besides your, your D, what is your steamiest 
erogenous zone. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to tell you an answer that's close to a bad place. Taint. I'm going to I'm going to say uh, uh I'm going to say my butt. Oh, I I thought those were obvious zones. No, no, no. no I, choosing by obvious that. they mean D and B's. Oh, okay, that obvious. All right, well, I'd say my chest then. Your chest. Okay, let me see. And the answer is your stevia is erogenous zone besides the obvious. 44% number one, neck. Why? Number two, earlobes. Number three, taint. There you go. Well, we have to interpret this. Mm -hmm. The spot between my back door and my buddies. Yeah. yeah. And number four, nipples. Mm -hmm. His hot tip comes... And when I say butt, I don't mean the uh, bad place. I mean the squeezing of the buns. Well, well, it's open to interpretation, Mike. But, you know, that you know, any, in that area, it's just kind of, you know, you know it's All right. And then if, you know, fingers happen to... You know, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for understanding. Uh, his hot tip is David. David? Uh, he's 30. He says, an ex of mine used to sit behind me and nibble the back of my neck. Mm -hmm. The skin there is incredibly sensitive, and not on a woman it's sensitive. Not being able to see what direction her tongue was headed made it even more <laughs> erotic. Oh God! God, eat me with this. Mm -hmm. and, and Rob's answer is, Nelly just wrote it down. What is your erogenous erogenous zone besides the obvious? His right knuckles. <laughs> oh my God! Jesus. Now, uh, but before we continue, Mike, we do have a, a special surprise for you. Oh really? Um. Now, there's more of this. I want to cover this in the next break. Yeah. Um, you might remember, and I don't have the Satan voice on, so I can't do this thing. But anyway, Dr. Natasha Terry. Yes. Is on the telephone now. Dr. Terry. Hello. You got me. Okay. <laughs> Hello, this is Dr. McCary. Dr. what? Dr. McCary. Dr. McCary? Yes. Hi, doctor. How are you doing? How do you spell erotic, doctor? Erotic? Yeah. R-E-N-T-E-R-Y. How do, you, how do you spell? Hmm. Let me see. Sensual. Oh. I don't know. Give me another one. It's too hard. Erogenous. Oh. Too hard. Sexiest. S e x i n g. Sexing. Eyes. How do you spell oral? O r e. How do you spell oh. anal? A N E R Y. Anery. How about. Tom, are you eating something? I'm chewing gum, man. <laughs> okay, man. Dude. How about. Vagina. V I G E N. Vegan. Or vegan. Vegan. Oh, God. Breast. B R A T. Brat. Um, taint. What now? Taint. I don't think he knows what Taint it is. or paint? Taint. 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 Hey, Mike, is that with the... That's with a T, Tom. I'll give you the first letter. What is it? T? Taint. It's not... T-I-N-T-E. It's tinty. <laughs> or taint. Mm -hmm. He's close. He's doing all right. All right, Tom. We got to run. Noted expert, Tom Gavin. Hey, hey, Charlie. Hey, and Tom. What? You don't know a lot about the paint, but you know a lot, a lot about paint, don't you? I know, I like, I know about sex and stuff. You do? Yeah. Really? Yeah. What can you tell us about that? How do you spell paint ship? Paint, what? How do you spell paint ship? Paint ship. Paint ship. P a n t chip. C a m p. Right. Panty camp. How about lead? <laughs> what now? Lead. Lead? Lead. B A N D Y. Bandy. <laughs> hey, hey, Mike? Hello. Yeah, Tom. Hey, Mike, where's Charlie? He's right here, Tom. Hey, Charlie! Hi, Tom! Hi, Charlie! Hi, Tom! Hi, Tom. Hi, Tom. Hey, 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 Tom. Hey, Tom. You know, you know what it's time for, Tom? What? Go to break. Take us to the promised land. All right. Thought it, Mike. All of the, um, the syndicated. Go to break. Don and Mike, go to break. This is the Don and Mike Show. And hey, listen, if it's any help to you, I think you did the right thing. Really? 
You're not just saying that. No, no, no. I mean it. Really. But you two didn't get along. You said it yourself. All you ever did was fight. You're right. Thank you. Thank you. That's all we ever did. I'm telling you, we fought and fought, and then we had great sex. The Don and Mike Show. Is anyone listening? You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. First question, is anybody listening? Second question, you want to ask today? Amen. Like two pornographic Imagineers, Hi. Don and Mike. Hello, Don and Mike Show. Hey, Don and Mike. Yeah, howdy. Hey, uh, I thought another name for the tank was the uh, the Grundle. The Grundle? The Grundle? The Grundle. Yeah. Oh, the Grundle. I've never heard of that. It's always just been the taint. I haven't heard of it either. And it's yeah. and it's unigender. It's uh, mm -hmm. it's unisex. It's guys and girls both have the taint. Right. You wouldn't be waiting for us to ask you why it's called the Grundle, would you? No, I don't really know. Like my friends at college, we always called it the Grundle. Mm -hmm. The Grundle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably get an explanation. The regional mm -hmm. thing. All right, thank you. Yep, thanks. See you later. Bye. Bye, bye. You can't beat that taint. Though. <laughs> I tell you, just you got to watch it sometimes. Yeah, because it's so close to you know. No, you don't have to watch it at all. Where food comes out, you don't have to be careful of that at all. Well, you can't. I mean, we can't watch it unless you have a mirror to begin with. Well, it's not a watchable an thing. Idea. I'm not uh, enamored with the idea of somebody watching it. <laughs> no, but I just meant you have to watch it. Well, I didn't mean physically watch it. I mean, I'm just or wondering what your warning is about well, and why, you, have, why you, you would You have to warning. watch it with your, with your wife or your gal pal that if she's in that area, mm -hmm. you, you have to make sure that she knows... You know, don't go... Don't go over the line? Yeah, or, or under the line. Oh, why put restrictions on people? Well, <laughs> only restrictions would be hy hygienic. Hello, Don and Mike's show. And again, Buzz, you know, you live in your world, yes. I'll live in mine. Okay. <laughs> hey, okay. what's up? And Buzz, let me just, as long as you mention that... Uh -huh. Did you want to ask today? Yes. Okay. Yes, I did. Hello, Don and Mike. Twice. Hello? Twice. Hi, Don and Mike. Hey, man, it's a chode, man, or a skin zipper. I've heard chode before. I've heard, that. I've heard skin zipper. I've not mm. heard chode. Hello, hi. Don and Mike show. Hi, Don and Mike. This hey. is Dan. Hi, hi Dan. How you doing? Uh, another one over here is uh, Scranus. 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 I understand that. That's an easy one to figure out. Mm -hmm. Scranus is a good one. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. What's up, man? Howdy. It's the Nipkin. <laughs> now look, you know we've got great, we've got the yeah. greatest listeners in the world. Mm -hmm. No, the grunt, the grundle is the is the space between the nipkin is the piece of skin that hangs from that space. Well, there's no piece of skin that hangs. Well, yeah, I, I mean if you're in the if you're in a certain position, it's a fold. It's a it's a ridge. Yeah, okay, it's not a fold, and it doesn't hang. Well, mine doesn't hang. Well, maybe that guy's hangs. I don't, I, don't, I don't think mine hangs either. So the Nipkin hangs from the Grundle? Hello, Don and Mike. <laughs> but it's all, it's all good because it's all taint. That's right. We're talking taint. Mm -hmm. Hello, Don and Mike show. <laughs> Welcome Hello? to the Bill O'Reilly show. Today's topic, taint. <laughs> taint, Grundle, or showed. Hello. Hello? Hey, listen, I'm uh, done playing that game with you. Hello, Don and Mike show. John and Mike. Yes, we are. Hi. You, you guys have it all wrong. <laughs> Boys have chodes. Girls have taints. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh huh. Welcome to the no taint zone. <laughs> then do we both have grundles? Don and Mike. And he's gone. Oops. No, he just hung up. And do Hello. we both have, is it Lifkin? Don and Mike. Hello. Lifkin. Hey, Don and Mike. Lifkin. Yeah. Wait, let me turn on my radio. Not too hey. Well, oh, you caught it. Okay, good. Yeah. Now, remember uh, Jack? I think I kept calling it the Gooch. The gooch, yeah, in jackass. Yeah, remember they had the uh, the like little sh like like the skin uh, shocker, yeah. the muscle no, no, shocker. Okay, no, you're right. The you're right. They were shocking his gooch. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Bye. Mm. <laughs> okay. So many names. Okay, thank you. The gooch. Let's, let's get back to this. Uh, we could take these calls for the rest of the show. <laughs> we probably will have to. Name, <laughs> names of the taint. But I, I want to get back to this. Did uh, you walk the ass today? Okay, that's kind of repetitive, Rob. Get back to the uh, <laughs> cosmopolitan thing. Just because Buzz said he enjoys, you know, action, you know, south of the border. And you have you really washed twice today, Buzz? No, once was funny because it was uh, thorough and lingering. So I get it. When you said twice, that was just you were that was a joke. Making it funny. Exactly. Yeah. Seven. Now, I don't oh, want to talk no. to my son now. Oh, no, dear. Let me just say, this, Roll is, real uh, Bart, this is not a good time. I know you're 18. This is not a good time to be calling in. It's not. It, it's the sandbar. <laughs> he was contributing. 
Okay, I'll see you tonight, son. It's Sand Bar and it's the Nacho. <laughs> because it's Nacho. Yeah, no, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, you'll have a chance for all your material. You're coming down tomorrow for the draft lottery, right? Yeah. All right, we'll see you in the studio tomorrow. Just trying to help. <laughs> I know you are. Okay, Elvis, I'll talk to you later. All right. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. And you're calling him Elvis because... Oh, but he got so mad at me today because um, I went upstairs to, to wake him up at 11. I said, Bart, you got to get up. It's 11. He said, okay, I'm getting up. I went back up at 11.30. I said, hey, come on, uh, Bob, get, get your ass out of bed. He said, okay, Dad, I promise. And then I went up at noon, mm. and I said, hey, listen, I'm getting really pissed. I don't care if, if you're lazier or you want to just lay around, but hey, get out of bed. It's noon. 12.30, I go up, still sleeping. By now, I'm out of the shower, I've had my lunch. I'm getting ready to go to work. It's 1 o'clock. I walk into his room, and I go, hey, Elvis, it's 1 o'clock. <laughs> and all of a sudden, that gets him out of bed. Mm. Dad got him offended. He said, why don't you call me Elvis? I said, you see, Elvis used to stay up all night and would sleep all day. Right. Elvis. Elvis. And then, he, then we got the whole thing. I'm just I'm just a normal teenager. You know, okay. All right. All right, E. You had a bit of a night last night. Late night, is that what? Um, you know, I, 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 I trust that kid way too much. I don't know. Right. I, I really... Well, you're not normal. You're not abnormal. I mean, parents go to sleep before their kids was, come home. He was at home. Uh, he wasn't out. Right. He was at home with his, with his gal pal. Uh, and he, they went out to dinner, and then they got home uh, about 11. And I said, what are you going to do? We're going to go downstairs and, and watch a movie uh, down in the basement. I said, okay, just, you know. And I know his girlfriend's got to be home, like, by 1230 or something. So I said, right. well, you know, when, when she leaves, lock up the house and then turn the alarm on. And he always says, do you want me to wake you up? And I said, nah, nah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for all I know, I'm going to go down there with a black light after he goes to college. Oh, boy. Don't do that. Who knows? But I don't, I don't think so, because there's always a chance, mm -hmm. with me especially, every once in a while, even though they're both real nice kids, and whatever they do, if they do anything, I'm sure that they, they don't do it in my house, I do walk down there and, and open up the door every once in a while mm -hmm. and just go, hey, young people, I turn on all the lights in the basement. <laughs> young people, what movie are we enjoying today? Uh -huh. You know, and I've, I've never being a good chaperone. I've never caught anything, so he's he, he, he's a good guy. Uh, let's see. Uh, back to this quiz, um, Mike. What is the sexiest? Oh, and Buzz. What is the sexiest thing a woman can do with her free hand while giving you a handy? My answer would be, and and Ed, please do not delete me out. Take her other hand and play with. Please. I, I would say uh, touch the taint. But Play with the taint. Taint. Rob? Oh, make, Rob. make breakfast. Make breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what is the, sex the traditional answer? What is the sexiest thing a woman can do with a free hand while giving you a handy? Number one answer, take my hand and guide it to her hot spots. This, oh, so, come This is so on. unbelievably wrong. It's propaganda. You know, this is so wrong. Mm -hmm. This is Cosmo. Like, like a guy is sitting there getting a handy. He's laying back, getting a handy, and he's going to be thinking about her pleasure? <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, number two answer, touch herself. Mm -hmm. I could go for that. That's, you know. that's pretty, that'd be up there. I might even change mine. That's strong. Number three. Play with my bees. I'm changing mine. I, I, I want to adopt number two as my number one answer. And uh, number four answer is stroke my chest. Please, faggot. Uh, <laughs> Ryan, age 23, his hot tip. One time when this girl was stroking me, she suddenly took my hand and placed it on her belly, her thighs, and then her pleasure zone. Feeling how turned she, turned on she was, right. sent me over the edge. Right, yeah, yeah, right there. Locker. <laughs> I, I mean, um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I think it's, everybody, it's every guy. Liar, liar, I, 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 it was a combination, a combination of, of liar and, and yeah, right. yeah, locker, a locker. <laughs> like you that. locker. You are one mother locker. <laughs> you lucking fire. Um, what should a woman keep in mind when giving you oral? What should a woman keep in mind when giving you oral? This is a, you, do you have an answer? Because I don't know if I have one. Yeah, I do. Well, okay, uh, mine would be uh, not to go too fast. Mine would be don't neglect the bees. I would, I would.
would say nothing. Think of nothing else. <laughs> what is that? What is that, Yoda? What the hell is that? <laughs> what do I want her to think about? Of nothing else. <laughs> what should a woman keep in mind when giving you oral? Always remember who earns the paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number uh, one answer. What should a woman keep in mind when giving you oral? Vary between licking and sucking. Number two answer. Use her hands, too. Mm -hmm. oh, that's good. That's number, th good. Th number three. Hello. Don't neglect my bees. i got to change my answer again because I, I, I come up with one and then I forget. The, the use the hands, too, is absolutely my number one. And number four. Make sure her mouth isn't dry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Hi. Here's the hot tip from George, age 21. My best experience was when a woman alternated flicking her tongue against the tip while taking me completely. The two different sensations were so intense, I almost fell out of oh. bed. Yeah, 21-year-old, like, intern at the magazine. <laughs> okay. You are most turned off when you discover her down south region is. And, and uh, there's the obvious one. Yeah. It's smelly. Yeah. But I'm going to say when it's John Benet ish. With you on that. We agree on that one. I don't like uh, this. But no, 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 I can't say that. It's mm -hmm. got to be, you know, um, unclean. Unclean. Buzz. Well, that would be my first thing, but I thought you said aside from. Well, no, I mean, yeah. I, I, unclean I just, would be number right, one. Let me change sure. mine then. I'm going to say. No, you, you can say unclean. I have okay. not looked at the answers. Untrimmed. Yeah, untrimmed. or overgrown would be my second choice. Yeah. And Rob, you're most turned on when you discover her down south region is. Most turned off. Turned off. Oh, when it's a penis, Don. It's a penis. <laughs> <laughs> almost a good, can't function. A good answer, Rob. <laughs> Uh, number one answer right here. We should be playing the Family Feud. <laughs> Mostly bear. Oh, okay. So that's the one number one. That, you know what? That's, that's not true, though. That's not true because really, uh, guys, especially younger guys, now, show me Jean Benet. <laughs> younger guys, I, I think it's like a fifty-fifty split. The trend in porn now is you know less and less. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm, I'm proud not to be a trend. No, and you know what? I'm with you on that too. Number two answer: neatly trimmed and groomed. What do you mean? That's a turnoff? That is a turnoff. Neatly trimmed and groomed. That's insane. What? Right? Number three is mostly bare with just a strip of hair there. That's a turnoff. This is, this is completely designed for and women. Number four is au naturel, the wild look. Okay, that, now that is a turnoff. And there are no comments on that one. And uh, finally, how do you really feel about oral on a girl? How do you really feel about oral on a girl? Um, I think about that. It's okay. <laughs> Boy, that's an enthusiastic response. <laughs> My wife isn't listening today. It's okay. Rob, the hotline's ringing. Would you pick it up, please? <laughs> oh, boy. Don't oh, oh, me to it. If, if, if it's a member of my family, please tell them I'm not available right now. Yeah. Somebody who's just waking up. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your opinion about oral on a girl? Um... I'm for it. I, it it's good. I, I think you got to do it as payback. You, you have to. Even if you don't want to, you got to do it. And it, it can be good. It can be good. I totally dig it. Buzz. I love it. it it's the first place I go. <laughs> to quote someone else. Okay, number one answer. I love it. Mm -hmm. Number two answer. I like it, but only, mostly because it means I'll be getting mine later. That's yours? That would be my answer. Mm -hmm. Number three, I don't like it, but I pretend to, so she will tell her friends what a great lover I am. Mm -hmm. Number four, I hate it. And Timothy's top tip, guys love feeling your thighs tremble and tasting your excitement. But we can be shy about making the move so gently... Nudge your man's head downward. He'll happily get the hint. That's not a bad piece of advice. Mm. And finally, I got time for this. Oh, we're running out of time. We have Dr. Germ coming on. Let me just get one more question. It's a question perfect here. segue, incidentally. Um, you know, we can continue this tomorrow, but what sex aisle is your all time favorite? What position's the hottest? What's the hottest thing to hear coming out of her mouth? If mattress motions aren't getting her closer to the big O, how should she clue you in? What position haven't you tried? Your kinkiest sex fantasy. 
What's the one thing you want more of in bed? What's the most salacious thing she could do after sex? What does a woman do after sex that makes you want to leave? How do you feel about <laughs> post-coital cuddling? And what, yes. <laughs> what next morning wake-up call is guaranteed to knock your socks off? Mm. Well, let's see. I'm gonna, well, we'll go with this one. Um, <laughs> how about what's the hottest thing to come out of her mouth? This is while oh, doing the deed. Of course, my DNA. <laughs> uh, no, I would say uh, a dirty talk. Dirty talk. Yeah. Specifically, I don't know if I can say this. I mean, I'll just say dirty talk. I'll well, stick no, with that. Go ahead, Buzz. I don't want to be, can you say F me? Sure. Yeah, that, sure. That, that would be my number one thing to hear. Dirty talk. If I want to get specific, dirty talk about my thing. Okay, about your thing. I like just general dirty talk. I like the dirty talk to be talking about your thing. My thing. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Number one answer. Hottest thing to hear coming out of her mouth? Moans and sighs. Murs and purrs. Number two. Dirty talk. However, you should wait, Mike, because yours is... Uh, now I see yours is coming up here. Number three. Directions. Harder. Faster. Number four. Flattery. You're so big. You're so good. You're so sexy. Yeah, that's good, too. And, Rob, what about you? What is your answer? I like when she says uh, <laughs> she was good at first and he built good roads. <laughs> oh, you know, this is just so retarded. We're going to come back to this tomorrow. Yay. It's fun. Yeah. We're gonna, if you'll pardon the pun, we'll come back to this tomorrow and uh, we'll get uh, some more input. You know, we I could write one of these articles and, and make it honest, but ours would probably not be in Cosmo. Right, the guy's <laughs> version. Ours would have to be like in Sports Illustrated or something. Right, keep quiet. <laughs> Just do it and leave. Go make me some eggs. <laughs> do it, enjoy it, uh -huh. and then immediately... You can look for our article in Screw Magazine. <laughs> Turn on Channel 501. <laughs> That's HBO. Yeah, it's always a good starting point sure. yeah, right. for the remote. Yeah. Right. Do you always start with 501? Every time. Yeah, I do too. I, I either start with 501 or 206, depending on the the ESPN, right? Yeah, it's either Sports Center yeah. or HBO. That's always my starting point. I just work my way up and down from there. That's right. I uh, got a break right here, and when we come back, uh, as I mentioned, oh, we can lose this, uh, <laughs> but we can play this. Did you wash the ass today? <laughs> yeah, very nice. uh, you used to know him as Dr. Duty. <laughs> Now he's uh, Dr. Germ. Uh, this guy will enlighten you, and, and I urge you, if you are freaked out about cleanliness and things like that, you want to listen to this guy. Yeah. Now, I want to tell you, he's got some, some kind of cream he's selling. Mm -hmm. So we're going to tell him he can do his, his whole big, you know, spiel at the I'm end. sure it's a sanitizer type thing. But um, here are some of the topics that he's willing to discuss today. Oh, good. How handshakes can kill. Mm -hmm. The deadly truth about hospitals. How going to the movies can kill you. <laughs> yeah. And the top ten things you should never touch. Excellent. Outstanding. Fantastic. So we'll talk to this guy right after this. This is the Don and Mike Show. <laughs> What's the matter? Cold. See your conditioning. Why do they always turn those things up so high? I'll probably get the flu. You want me to ask them for a blanket? you got to be very careful with air conditioning. You know? Francis and I, we've got one in the bedroom. I never let her turn it on in the summer. Oh, she must be crazy about that. Uh, 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 I knew it. <laughs> What's the matter now? Hmm? No, I got this. My ears are filling up. I got this sinus condition. It's the change in temperature. I always get it from air conditioning. <laughs> Maybe it'll go away. No, no, it's all part of my allergies. I get them in the summer. Uh, Only in the summer? Nah, and in the winter, too. I get them all year long. Allergic to foods. Nah, and pillows and curtains and perfumes. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Allergic to perfumes? I used to drive Frances crazy. For a while, she couldn't wear anything except my aftershave look. That she... <sighs> was impossible to live with. Clear up my ears. Nah, you create a pressure inside your head. It opens up the eustachian tube. Nah. 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 Nah.
Sexiest thing a woman can do with her free hand while giving you a handy? Um, probably feed me a uh, ice cream sundae. <laughs> <laughs> okay. now, now you're starting to sound like a 60 year old guy. I am. <laughs> well, you know what it is? It's when you're 60 years old and your wife, you know, gets past that menopause thing mm -hmm. and the hormones go down and down with the hormones go everything else and pretty soon you feel like a eunuch. So, you know. Ice cream Sunday doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> Doc, that actually, and I'm not trying to embarrass my wife here because it's a fact that she went. Through. My wife is is going to be, oh goddamn, her birthday was just a couple months ago. She's she's in in her in mid to late forties, yeah. and she uh, she went through early menopause. But like Jesus Christ, when she was a long 30, time ago, like, yeah, she was thirty, and. Uh, she doesn't like taking the hormonal replacements because of all the stuff that's out, you know, saying can yeah. cause cancer and stuff. So now she's got this thing that looks like a, a little thing of a band roll-on. Yeah. Roll on deodorant thing? And it's a thing that... Uh, Spidoestrogens. Yeah, and... It's uh, from, from sweet potatoes. She, oh, yeah. she like... <laughs> she, she, Let me ask you a question. She, she rolls it down there, and then that gets her going. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's, well, that's easier. To. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it's banned for the other place, that's all. And, yeah, uh, it's banned roll-on. And listen, the, uh, the, the, the reason we have you on is, is germs. We're fascinated by germs. I know. Last time I was on, I, I was just amazed at how fascinated you were. Well, I um, think everybody in our society mm -hmm. is, especially with, with medical information, that came out, it seems like, years ago, Stars. that that said Stars. that, you know, every time I used to, when, when you get sick when I was a kid, when you get on any kind of little stomach pain, it was always, hey, you got the bug, you got the 24-hour bug. And only recently, relatively, have we discovered that really most of the times that people are sick like this with the stomach thing, it's because they've come in contact with bad food, with germs somewhere. That's where all this stuff comes from. I think that's why people are more fascinated. Well, it's not only that, but if you look in the newspaper, every day there's something about germs. I mean, we've got West Nile virus, we've got monkeypox, we've got SARS, we've got everything. All right, listen, Doc, let's get right to it before your commercial. Yes. What are the top ten things <laughs> you should never touch? I, and I know a bathroom door has to be mm -hmm. on that list. It, it is. It is. It is. Yes. The, the door dominant in a bathroom is really filthy. Uh, money, paper money. Paper money. Now, now, how do you live your life without touching paper money? No. You don't. I mean, but I'm going to tell you how to solve that problem later well, you, on. You use plastic, maybe. Yeah, well, yeah. no, no. Right, paper so paper money is just loaded. In fact, it's the largest carrier of the flu virus in the wintertime. All right, wow. so you've got ATM keypads, okay, oh, are really nasty. Airplanes, the inside of airplanes are filthy. We've, co we've cultured tuberculosis on trade tables. And by the way, when you fly, oh, do, not, do not use the pillows and blankets. You know, oh, my God. All right, keep going. All right. Um, anything you touch at work. Look at all the 
junk around you in your in your studio there. You know, the microphone and all the other controls. How many people touch that stuff? Uh, and not even counting the weekenders, you don't want to know. And the overnighters, you they're even see worse. Those people. And if you are going to touch these things, I would assume. Frequent hand washing is very important. essential. We we know that 85 percent of all the infections that you get, you pick up with your hands. I mean, your hands touch just about everything. And if you think about all the places your hands will be today, I know they will be in some pretty nasty places. And you touch your mouth, nose, eyes, and ears, and this is how you introduce bacteria and viruses that cause you to become sick. Mike, Mike's doing it now. All right, so going down the top ten things you should never touch. We have the bathroom door. You got stuff at work. You got paper money. You've got the ATM. What else? Uh, public transportation, buses, subways, cabs. You ever been in a cab in New York City? Oh, like going to Bangladesh. <laughs> you know, it's terrible. Well, the thing about a cab. Here's the thing about a cab in New York. I mean, many times getting into a cab. And, and, you know, it's not like you can see anything, but you smell it. It just smells horrible. Oh, yes. So it's either urine or curry. One of the two. Take your pick. <laughs> All right. Give, it, give us another one, Don. Um, how about, you know those mints in a restaurant by the cash register? Oh, yeah. Never touch those mints. We took black lights, and we went over oh. and put it over those mints, so we could see little glowing green crystals. Those are uric acid crystals from urine. Ah! <laughs> so, no, well, what, happen, what happens is people go to the restroom just before they leave. They touch that stupid, nasty doorknob, ah. and then they stick their hands in the mints. I mean, it's very simple. Oh. How about the theater seats? You know, the theater seats that you can get sick from? Yeah. Now, you say you can die. Well, you know, that's a little bit of an exaggeration. Going to the but listen to this. Kill listen you. to this. Going to the movies can kill you, it says. I, I know what it says. But it's, it's a little bit of an exaggeration. Okay. Actually, it probably could kill you if you had a very bad abuse system. I have a question for you well, because uh, I'm a golfer and I've been to a lot of golf courses. And I got into a golf cart one time. And yeah. I sat down and I sat on that cushion. Yeah. And all of a sudden I smelled this odor come up uh, from, the, from the cushion. And I was wondering if you've ever run your black lights over golf carts. Never run them over golf carts. Because guys, you know... Fart all the time. Well, they do. In fact, that's the problem with the theater seats because uh, I've cultured theater seats and we come up with a lot of fecal bacteria. <laughs> <laughs> all right? God. And, my, and I'm talking to my wife, who's also a microbiologist, and I said, What do you think? She says, It's probably because these guys are farting in the theaters, okay? Yeah, it's going right through their clothes and their underwear, and it plasters right to the seat. So you get to the theater, you've got to grab that seat because it's on a spring. And how many times have you been in there seriously, and it's a loud part in the movie? You just let a big, big-ass beaver go. Well, and kids. And kids that are in theaters. Oh, that, uh, absolutely. That, that are yeah. You know, it, it, all that stuff happens. How about the laundromats? We just did a thing with the washing machines and laundromats. Right, now, you would think that would be a clean environment. Why? Why? Why do you think it would be? Because you're putting detergent and soap in, in hot water. A, hot water, thank you. Buzz hot water? Yeah, but it doesn't do anything. We found so many sexually transmitted disease organisms in these washing machines. Oh. It's absolutely amazing. Oh, oh my God. God. Like, tell us the sexually transmitted Like, we found a lot of chlamydia. Chlamydia is very common. Ah! All right. So oh, that, that reminds me, just want to say shout out to Baltimore today. <laughs> wow. You How you doing, Baltimore? <laughs> but I got to tell you this. There's a perfect out for you. If you get a case of chlamydia, you can just tell your wife you washed your stuff in this common washing machine, and Dr. Germ said that's probably where you got the, uh, oh, the chlamydia. Really? Yeah. So you can actually wash your stuff and, and, and use detergent, and then it, and it comes out, and it's still got the active virus in there? Yeah, it's, a, it's a bacterium. It's a bacteria. Yeah, absolutely. It, it still has the, cl the chlamydia organism in there. And we make stuff, for example, you can put in your washing machine and get rid of all that stuff so you won't bring anything home. But, you know, it's the same thing with women who have you know, recurrent yeast infections. Um, it's because they don't sterilize their underwear. Hold on. Let, let me just, let me, before you do this, let me just get on the other line. Yes. <laughs> I'm on the intercom now in the building. Oh, very good. Attention all women of radio station WJFK. This is your friend Don. I'm here with Dr. Germs who has something important to say to you. You're on the intercom in the building right now, Dr. Germs. Thank you very much, Don. I just want to tell the female residents of the building that if you have common yeast infections, recurrent, happen all the time, you can't seem to get rid of them, take this advice from me. 
you got the stuff in the crotch of your underwear and you're not getting rid of it, and when you put the underwear back on, hey, Ron, you reinfect yourself. Well, you got the whole see if this is being broadcast throughout the building. Uh, Thank I mean, you, Doctor. I, mean, I, I know the show is, but I want to make sure this isn't like just blaring through everything. So, what do you do with your underwear? You uh, take, we, we have a disinfectant. You can spray it right on the crotch of your underwear before you wash them, and we'll get rid of all that yeast. <laughs> and when you and you won't reinfect yourself. Hmm. Very good. All right, and would you say goodbye now to all the women at radio station WJFK? Yes, all, all of you uh, wonderful women at WJFK, uh, <laughs> heed my advice, and uh, you will not itch much longer. Or Thank just, you, Dr. Just go without. Thank you, Dr. Rob. No, I, go without. I uh, turned the uh, speaker all the way up in the sales area, just because it was closest. <laughs> there you go. Those are yeah. the people who probably need it the most. <laughs> Before your, your commercial here, one yes. last thing. Mike and I were at a meeting yesterday with a bunch of just the, the lowest form of life on this planet, executives in this country. Company. And we, program directors. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, higher up than that. And we had we had to shake these lizards' hand, these lizards' hands. Why do you do it? Uh, well, because it's a common courtesy. Uh, and and I know it's not just an indictment of man. I want to go down to the men's room right now and wash my hands. And an indictment of them. But in general, what happens when you shake someone's hand? Well, it depends on what they've been hanging on to. You know, I got this thing, and I don't know if it came from you, but I thought it was kind of calm and kind of cute. And it said that. Uh, what the heck is it? I got it right here on my desk. Here it is. Uh, anyway, you will shake hands. Have you seen that? Uh, you know, we did have that on this show. We did have that. In, um, I think that's cool. In one day? Yeah, you know, but that's, you know, you, you never know what people were doing. You know, I used to own a sperm bank in New Jersey. <laughs> God. I will not tell you the name other, though, other than the fact that it was known as Dr. Bob Jank and Tank to my friends. <laughs> was it a lucrative business, it doctor? Was, it, it was. It really was. You don't believe how many, you know, infertile women there are because their husbands uh, have low sperm count. So I guess you came into a lot of money. I uh, <laughs> only when I used the golden condom. <laughs> Liquid assets. How much would you pay guys to donate? Um, they got well. It depends on how much they produced. Really? Oh yeah. It's based on uh, on volume and number of sperm. All right, let's say you got a guy with an average amount of sperm, but the guy is just like turning on a water faucet for you. Okay, well, there's one other there's one other thing that we look at, and that's what happens to the sperm when we freeze it in thought. It has to, we have to have good recovery, so lots of sperm. So the quality might surprise you. Yeah, but a, a, lot, a lot of those guys can make uh, two and three thousand dollars a month. Think about it. How much money did you throw down the toilet? Wow. wow. Or leave in the carpeting. Or leave in the carpet. Yeah. <laughs> How much did Bill Clinton leave on that dress? My God. Two to three grand a month? Three thousand dollars a month. Wow. You know, you know, hey, hello everybody. Fun. I'm not a genius, but I'll tell you this. That's thirty six thousand dollars a year. I believe Joe Ardinger has just left the building. <laughs> We're getting your jerk off. All right, so, job. all right, Dr. Germs, we've we found out about handshakes, the ten things you you should never touch. Why airplanes are bad, why movies are bad. All right, let now, me think. Okay. Let's, here you go. What do you do? 60 seconds for your commercial. Here it is. Uh, uh, and Rob, hold on. Give me the, uh, I need the TikTok. The TikTok? Oh, no, don't do the TikTok. It's going to make me so nervous. No, you won't right. hear it. I'm going to make it so you don't hear it. I'm going to be doing a commercial for Mac Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. All right, ready? <laughs> and you're not going to hear the TikTok, but it's going to be there. Go. Okay. All right. Just keep this in mind. 85% of all these infections are picked up by your hands. So you've got to, number one, keep the germs off your hands. Number two, you have to keep your immune system in really good shape because if you don't, you're going to get killed by something. And number three, you've got to stay away from people that are obviously sick. Now, we solved this problem. We have a product called the Microsan system. It's a skin care system that kills all the germs on your hands and keeps them off for four to six hours after you use the system. Very, very important. We have a product called Microside, which you can put in your wash to get rid of all those little nasties in the washing machine, but also use in your kitchen on the kitchen table. And we have a product called Immuplex, which is a absolutely wonderful product. We spent three years clinically testing this to improve your immune system so that if you do if you are exposed to an infection or something like that, your body will fight off that infection before you get a chance to really uh, develop a full-blown cold or flu. You have five seconds. Anyhow, let me give you a number to call, and that number is one 800 Oh, I'm so sorry. You're a nasty guy. <laughs> you know, I didn't do that. I, I did that absolutely straight. Right? Did you really? I gave him the yeah. full 60 yeah. seconds. All right, let me All give right. you a number. It's 1 800 669 4550. 4551, I'm sorry. 800 666. Let me do this. Here we got to be so flustered. 800 
4551. You can go to our website, drgerms.com. We have three booklets that you can have. Call that number, okay. and you can find out how you can get those three booklets. Now, you send us some free stuff. You turn yeah. into what do you want? Program. You want the stuff for the washing machine? Or you no, no, the stuff for work. Diseases? The, stuff, the stuff for work. The stuff for the bathroom. The stuff for... Yeah, I mean, think about the microphones that Mike and yeah, I are talking yeah, I would to love, right now. Yeah, I would really love... I mean, I'm itching already. I'd love to get some stuff that was... Uh, yeah, the hand stuff. That, that's it, you know? We'll send, we'll send you a package. But Very just good. remember that... It, what's that 800 number, Don? <laughs> I didn't write you it down. You didn't pay attention, did you? No, I didn't. 800 Call that number. You can find out how to get three free booklets okay. in this right, product. All right. Very good. All right, slow down, sperm man. We got, <laughs> we, got, hey, we got the ad. When you're tracking sperm under a microscope, you got to be fast because they're fast swimmers. Ah, very good. <laughs> all right, thank you, Dr. Uh, hey, thanks Dr. for having Dr. me. See you later. Okay. Bye, dude. That's true. Hey, he's a great guest. Yeah, he is. Bye-bye. You can make $3,000 a month selling your spunk. You know we're going to get a phone call from somebody that's done it. I mean, we'll get the real details on that. I mean, it's one thing to hear from Dr. Uh, Germ, but I'd like to hear from some guy that's actually donated. I'd sign up if I wasn't barren. <laughs> Sorry, Buzz. And uh, I know mine could swim. Yeah. And I know when we tried to have a second baby that uh, that we went in and mine could swim. Now, granted, that was years ago. Right. But... And you got two, so yours can swim. Mine can swim. Rob, you got two. Yours can swim. Yes, and I'm younger. All right. Okay. I don't need to say that. But I bet I could make... This is, no, this is too gay. I, was say, I bet I could make more. <laughs> I don't know. You just stopped me in my tracks there. They have pills for that, too. To be able to make more... Sure. That's do? the latest. Yeah, but it's all BS. Yeah. It's BS. I can make more of that, too. Roping? Those pills don't... Those pills... That, that's, that's complete... Huh. I read an article about that. Really? But that's all a lie. Huh. It's fiction. Why? Why? I mean, I, I've read the, the contrary. Have you tried? I haven't read the article. Have you read. tried a no, product? I have not, no, I've not tried the product. Buzz, it's funny. I've been thinking about it. It's funny how much you know, though. Why would you want to think about it? Don't you make enough uh, goo? Sure, but more is always better. In any aspect of life, more is better. I'm happy with the amount of goo I make. I'm not. <laughs> really? Mm hmm. Well, may, well, would you think about taking a pill that would make you able to make more yeah. pee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I, I think that would be tied into a better. You know, thing. Mm -hmm. A better O. <laughs> Hello, Don yeah, Mike. That's what they say. Oh, you think, oh, so... But I, I also don't buy, buy that crap because I think uh, all that stuff is just... Do you yeah. think it would make your O last longer? There is a, a cottage, in, there's a cottage industry mm -hmm. of all that stuff that is supposed to make you longer, make you bigger, make you more intense, make more. And I think, I think almost 99% of it is pure crap. Well, if you want to hear that, listen to some of our Westwood One commercials. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike. Yeah. Hey, guys, how are you? I'm sitting here driving with no hands now. I'll probably get into an accident because I don't know who the hell pulled, touched my steering wheel. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you I know, just took it in for service last no, week. No, I don't really? know what did the guy touch. You would go nuts if you think... Think about this. If you obsessed over this, you, you won't touch anything. Right. I, know, about, I work with computers all day, yes. and I, I touch people's keyboards all day. Remember think about... You go to the gas station. You fill up your tank with gas. The uh, moment, uh, no. the moment uh, you touch that <laughs> nozzle and you put it in your car... Boom! There are the gribblies on your hand. Mm -hmm. Right. Then you put it back, so you get a second dose of it, and then you go in the car and you shut the door. Maybe it's sweaty. The first thing you do is you go, oh, God. You wipe your face. There's so much, but you know what? I, I, a couple of my family members, my mom and my sister, have said for 20 years, mm -hmm. you know, wash your hands, yeah. compulsively best, wash your hands, and they do. don't get sick. Yeah. Neither one of them gets sick. I mean, it's, I think it's, it's absolutely true. Even in a restroom, after you've washed your hands, except for the new automated restrooms, you wash your hands. What do you, you when you're done washing, you reach and you grab these faucets to turn off the water. Well, you, you're already contaminated again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You do it with your elbow. I'm still thinking about the, uh, <laughs> leave it you know, the white pee, though. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, how you doing? That would, that would... I, I, you know, that thing about washing hands. All you really have to do is I carry one of those little bottles around that like has lanolin and alcohol in it. I mean, these people laugh, but I don't get sick, man. Right. No, I, I believe it. I, I totally you, believe it. And you know what? Yeah, you are going to touch some stuff after you wash your hands. Mm -hmm. The fact is... It's all about percentages. It's about how much stuff yeah. you're going to have on your hands. Right. And if you wash your hands, you're reducing the odds. You know, when I go in the bathroom here, and I try not to go number two in this building, but when I go number one, if I use the urinal, and, and I know that I'm just putting the germs on my on my elbow, yeah, but you... I will flush with my elbow at the urinal, and in the men's room, mm -hmm. I, I use my foot. I don't mm -hmm. have to bother yeah. that because if you if you wash your hands 
after you've done that, you're you're taking care of your problem. And after I wash, when I push open the door, I use the surgeon method where you use your forearm to push I, the door open. I don't I don't do that enough, but I never touch the handle. Yeah. And I don't, right. you know, and really, I'm not being honest. I don't do it every time. You know, I wash I, your hands. Well, of course, never. I don't. I mean, I don't do it as often as I'd like to do it. I, I sometimes, if I'm in a hurry or something like that, I, I'll I'll run out of there if there's somebody in there I I'll, like. And a lot of times, if other people are there, mm -hmm. I just splash water on my hands. Mm -hmm. just like so they think I'm washing my hands. Yeah, yeah. Even. I mean, yeah, absolutely. It's really, you know, and and you know, I go out a lot more than you guys do. And let me tell you something. I would say we're talking about sixty, seventy percent. Of guys that that I'll be seeing, especially young guys, you're sitting there and they go in, take care of their business, zip right out mm -hmm. without. A, I no, mean, not even vast a, majority. Not yeah, yeah, not even a thought about it. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I think you'd be surprised how many girls do that too. Well, you know, and I've done it before. I mean, I I, I be honest, I I've, I've done it before, and, and I think everybody once in a while. Occasionally, but I gotta be more compulsive about it. Right. But, but do you know? <laughs> do you know, do you know sometimes? Yeah. <laughs> Just because I get tired of having my my balls busted. Oh, we got the sound incident. <laughs> the of, ball busting sound. Uh, when my balls are being busted. <laughs> when I will come out of the bathroom down by our kitchen, the, uh, the bathroom I'm not allowed to look, to use right. because it's by the kitchen, which you know brings the discussion. Why do we have a bathroom there? Right. And so it's decided no one can ever go number two in there. You can only go number one in there. Good rule. So if I go in there and I go number one and I come out and my wife says to me, you didn't wash your hands, I say, well, how do you know? She says, I didn't hear the water running. Do you wash so, your hands at home? So. No, quite often I don't. So what I will do sometimes, now this is really just, it's tough, the queer duality of being me. If my wife is in the kitchen having a sandwich, reading the newspaper, having her coffee, and I go in to take a leak, just to spite her, when I'm done taking the leak, I'll turn on the water, and I'll even put the soap under the water, mm -hmm. and I'll put it back, but I won't wash my hands. Let the soap to leave because evidence. Because if, if she says to me, you didn't wash your hands, I'm going to say, didn't you hear the water? Mm hmm well, why don't you go in and see if the soap is wet? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> but still, I'm only hurting myself. Right. Because, yep. I didn't wash. Absolutely. My hands, and quite often, the first thing I do, I get back, I walk over there, put my hand on the back of my wife's neck, or on my wife's head, go, you know, mm, mwah, I love you. Her eyes. Love you, baby. No, well, not her eyes, Buzz, but. You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I walk right over there. Hey, you got a little sleeper, right? <laughs> yeah, let me get that for you. Anyway, I've done it. I'm not proud to, to tell you I've done it. I've, go, I've gone in there and gone to hook you. And, and I've actually had the thought while I'm there, well, why don't I just wash my hands? Well, no, because then she wins. Right. So, no, I'm not going to wash my hands. Do you know that I think as we get older and as society uh, gets more germ-phobic, which I think is going to happen with all these things out there, you're probably going to see public places try to create either new products that are going to combat this or... You're going to see uh, people just become more aware of it. I you, think. you know, there's a school of thought that says it's okay to be exposed to this stuff because that's how you build up an immunity to it. If you never come in contact with a lot of these germs and yeah. then one day you do, boom, you're dead. Mm -hmm. Heard that too, Buzz. Yeah. And what's all this about donating sperm? <laughs> I'm fascinated by three thousand dollars a month. Sign up. Christ, I feel like Jed Clampin. <laughs> I really do. You, well, you also have to think about the Good fact doctor. that how many times do you? You know, do you waste it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about, that's money in the bank. Not anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Now it's... <laughs> no more wasting. Imagine if someone could go through my carpet and dry clean my carpet oh, God. in my cave. <laughs> oh, dear. You know, it's well, raining. It ought to be done anyway. It's raining. <laughs> you might want to think about that. <laughs> Stanley Steamer ought to be coming over there as we speak. Right. Because you've never done that in your house. In my carpeting? Yeah. Absolutely not. Really? Never. Where? Okay, where does it end up? It ends up uh, on my tummy, and then I get like a towel, or I get uh, like, uh, you know, okay, tissue. You know, me? and then it goes right into the toy toy. You know me, I like like mm. Caesar's Caesar's Palace, you know, the fountains. Mm -hmm. Now wait, I, but I have I, used but... I have used the aforementioned sock when you know it was pure laziness. <laughs> but no, I don't. No, never, never in the carpet. Mm. Really? No. 
That was evidence, you know, when when I was with somebody, you know, I wouldn't want to do that. And now it's just like you just stand up and with your shoe, you just, you know, like you put down a cigarette. You just you go, oh wait, let me see if I can see where it is. Oh, there's a Glock. Oh my yeah. god. Oh. Yeah, just like you're putting out a cigarette. Man. Oh wow. It's very simple. I don't think you do that as much as you say you do. Every time you do that, it goes in the carpet. Yes. Where? Okay, I, I'm on the, uh, well, you know, I, now I'm concerned about if my kid's listening. Bart, turn the radio off if you're listening. I'm in my room yeah. in the cave. Okay, oh, oh, in your room in the cave. You know the one chair oh, in that the I cave. got in there? Okay, all right, so all right. I'm in that big easy chair, yeah. and I put the ottoman out about <laughs> two feet in front of me, and I'm, and I'm sitting back, and my legs are, are on that, and my legs are kind of, and I'm kind of in a launching position to begin with, and I'm working my man, and then it just, it, so I think I know why you do it. You don't want to have anything to do with it afterwards. No, no, and, and it goes and it goes like, like I'm like I'm firing it. It's like, I want to tell you, and also my floor has never been shiny. <laughs> it's God. right over the top. <laughs> what about you, Buzz? Uh, the, the carpet has occasionally been soiled. Yes, but you know I I don't use my shoe. I use you know like a sock or something like that. Yeah. Towel, whatever. Yeah, like that's better. Well, I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying. It's not detectable. Mike's concern is that it would be found later, and I, I sort of fix it. Well, so I got news it for you. It, it, it's not easy to hide. Hey, guys, watch CSI, okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. But watch CSI. It doesn't have a black light. Yeah, pick that up. Someone pick, if that's my kid. You know, I told him not to, to mm. turn the radio on now. For Christ's sake. You know, you know, I don't want him to go to college, but I'm glad we're not on down there. You know, this conversation, am I the only one who uses oh, the coffee oh, can? Dear. Coffee it's, can. It's my wife. It's not, it's not, it's not Bart. Hello? I, I'd like a divorce when you have a chance. Why? I don't. I, I, you're grossing me out. <laughs> I don't want to be affiliated with you any longer. <laughs> these, these are things I've talked about before. Well, it is. What do you think? When you get that direct TV bill, what do you think? Where do you Look, I don't care about the direct TV. I just, I just want to get a tarpaulin for that room now. <laughs> I mean, you know that that's the room where the activity is happening. I, you can enjoy watching those without grinding your mucus cigarettes into the carpet. That's yeah. disgusting. <laughs> that was... I really, I really, I, I really am having a hard time. Being married to you right now, darling. Well, you should change the station then. <laughs> well, that's a good idea. All right, excuse me while I go bury my head in the sand. <laughs> All right, well, I'll change the topic if this is as absolutely disgusting you. But it's, no, it's I don't the want truth. The I, you can change the topic, but change the behavior. I, I'm not going to change my behavior, uh, baby. I, listen, I've got news for you. I, someday, not on the radio, but someday, I will tell you. All of the different rooms in the homes we've lived in where I have soiled and left evidence. I have seen some evidence, and I've asked you about it in our last house. Why is our wall, why does it look like that? Oh, oh God. I know. I remember that when the movers came yeah. that day. You know, I remember. It was, no, it wasn't the mover. It was, just, it was just a generic question. Why is that like that near the TV, the wall? I didn't know if there was some... You know, maybe had a, a nest of honeybees. Oh, God. Yeah. I didn't know See, if now, it was coming from the inside. Now, now who's bees? <laughs> who's, per, who's perpetuating this now? You are. Now, you and, know what? and in it's, some strange, odd I, way, I'm finding a perverse pleasure in all of this. <laughs> it's, it's not the talking about it. I don't even care. My, I have so little pride. I don't even care about the talking about it. I don't want you to do it. All right, listen, i got to go because I do have a guy on the phone who's donated his number three. Yeah, all right. All right, baby. Hi. Hey, Hi. love you. Yeah, not enough. No, You're come on. You're loving yourself a little too much. Oh, come on now. <laughs> Throw me some love. Uh, uh, you know, I, 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 I love the man you could be, my darling. You love the man I could be. <laughs> so there's a chance. You're telling him there's a chance. I'm telling you that the man that you're with now is the same man you've been married to for 22 years. Well, if anything, my aim's but... gotten better. <laughs> Good for you, Don. All right, Very baby. Fine. All right, I'll see you. Thank right. God they, that they that they put that carpet treatment on carpets now. <laughs> right. Goodbye. Watch it. That's all I'm going to say to you is watch it. Be very careful. No, you know, I'm going to say something that should get really pissed. Yeah, at. don't do that. Were you about to fire a warning shot across her bow? Oh, 
<laughs> that shot's already been fired, Mike. Uh, I see. Let me just say, when you walk into that beach place, be careful where you walk. Oh, oh dear. no. Where you walk. You've uh, donated sperm? Yes, sir. Good man. Where'd you do it? Uh, over in Fairfax. There's, Fairfax, uh, hey, that's where we're Fairfax, we're doing on the way into work. Buzz is getting out of his chair. <laughs> How much did you get? Uh, it was about between 2000 and 2500 a month. You go once a week. Once a week? Oh yeah, you, you, because you have to let it build up, and you, they put restrictions on how often you can... Uh, Get your jerk on, right, or, or have sex, I'm sure. Own, right. right. What do they tell uh, you? Do, you? do you have to do it once a week? Is that all they, they want? I um, mean, you can do it, like, twice a week. The problem is you only get paid by... They take... A, they figure out how many specimens they can get out of each uh, session, and so you only, you get paid per specimen. So it's not worth going in and and doing the deed if you know you're not gonna. Uh, I'm gonna tell you right now. I, I believe that probably most of your sperms they've rejected. What's that? I, I think after talking to you, most of your sperms are probably rejected. You think so? I, I think. How do you exactly get paid? They give you a check. But I mean, wait, see, this is my point. He's too dumb. Uh, uh, right, he's too, uh, he's uh, too uh, dumb a guy to uh, really be able to get information out of. At some point, when you get a guy like that going into a sperm bag, they have to say to him, "Your ladies that are infertile, please beware. These are the guys that are donating sperm." <laughs> is this guy saying that he only gets paid after someone buys his sample? I don't know. We have to break. We we have to break. We need to I, talk to more donors. I think they do a sperm count, and however many doses they can get out of a an individual contribution. Mm -hmm. That's One, how they determine how he gets two. paid. How do you get paid, though, sir? <laughs> With a check. Duh. Right, Money uh, order. We'll continue this incredible discussion <laughs> when we come right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Did you wash your ass today? Why don't you take your love and shove it up your big fat ass? You know you're the reason we're true. Did you wash your ass today? I'm not all the yelling and the fights that we had it. They won't be cold to you. Anywhere in America, 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. How charmingly ghetto. That gravy dog, the Don and Mike Show. All my yeah. Some of our stations that we broadcast to, at least for now, while we're still doing the syndication thing, right? Uh, while we're still being syndicated. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the stations send us ratings right away, mm -hmm. and some stations we have to actually go into the computer, the Arbitron computer, to find out right. how our ratings are. Uh -huh. Well, uh, I had Charlie Bryce. I said the, the other day, I said, Charlie, didn't Seattle come out? Mm -hmm. I said, yeah. I said, we saw the station's ratings were down. I said, well, what about us? Uh, it, it's hard to tell because we were on noon to three. Right. So we're in the 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. time slot, which okay. we share with a, another guy uh, who we like. Uh, what's his name? Uh, BJ O'Shea. Yeah. 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 And uh, and we I, we don't have the hour by hours, but uh, man 18 to 49 from a 44 to a 48. Wow, that's good. Man 18 34 from a 44 to a 48. Man 25 54. That's our money demo. Money from a 40 to a 54. That's Ooh. good. From eighth place to second place, wow. so that that that's good. Those are those are good numbers. Very good. I'm seeing from winter to spring, which would be book to book, mm -hmm. but you would know because they don't bother to call. Come on! But why should they bother to call to tell? Because they don't bother to pay. They don't care. Mm -hmm. No, it's just it's on. It's there. It's yeah. something. They turn the switch on. Why pay there. attention to it? Right. So anyway, but that's. That's a discussion for us to have with all the guys whose hands we don't like shaking. <laughs> um, hello, Don and Mike Show. Hello. Are you there? Sounds like the phones are dead again. Are we having that same that oh, no. same deal with the phones again? Look at them. Um, Don and Mike, hello. Hello. There we go. Hi. Hey, what's up, fellas? Hi there. You know, the, the problem is here uh, that we have one set of phone lines, these lines right here. Those lines are from Canada, mm -hmm. and these lines 
are the local secret lines for Washington, D.C. They're analog. Right. The new national lines that we have are digital. Yeah. And they're supposed to be state-of-the-art. Yes. And, and the problem is... When more than ten people call, mm -hmm. the system gets overloaded. Mm -hmm. it crashes. It's, 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 set up, it's set up to accommodate 12 phone lines. However, whoever set the system up only uh, accommodated ten. So we get double the amount of sperm donors that would normally call. Mm -hmm. yes. The system will just uh, flat out quit. <laughs> so the, the number, now that I've decided uh, through my extensive research of the last three days of watching the system crash and burn, is if at any given moment 20 people call... Mm -hmm there's a good chance that the digital phone system will shut itself down. Now we know. Well, that's not the way these phones are supposed to work. No, it's not. <laughs> that's... These phones, more than any other, have to uh, handle a tremendous volume of calls. I know you're joshing because that's for your own safety. You wouldn't want those phones to go crazy. No, I wouldn't. No, you're right, Rob. <laughs> that's a protection there. Hello. <laughs> yeah, you're on the air. Hi. Yeah, hey, how's it going? Okay. Have you, uh, I had considered refinancing my school loans by donating sperm at one point. And then I guess it was a few weeks ago, there was a segment on 60 Minutes about there's these children and moms out there that have collected, donated sperm to have children. The children are pushing for legislature so that they can have contact information of the donors now. So this one guy actually got in touch. The girl actually got in touch with his donor. You know, as, as somebody who's adopted, uh, I, I can dig that. I can understand that. I can that. understand that and really... When you do that, I would imagine when you donate your sperm, it would probably be in the back of your mind. And I, I would think that even though most guys would want to cut and run in the other direction, there might be some level of curiosity on the part of the donor. You might at least, you know, like the the, the great mystery of my life is with the exception of, of my son and, and uh, my daughter, I, I, I don't know anybody in the world that looks like me. Mm -hmm. Everybody else that I know... Mm -hmm gets to walk around and say, oh, oh, yeah, you're my brother, you're my mom, you're my dad, whatever. And you take well, it for granted. That's, that's not totally, in a, you know, you're not totally inaccurate there. What do you mean? You have people who look like you. <laughs> there are. <laughs> yeah, I know there are people who look like me. I know. I've been told that I look like Anthony Soprano. <laughs> but there are, you, you know what I mean. It's yeah. that thing, that family resemblance. Right. Like, right. And, that, and that's, that's nutty. Well, you could also have a family like mine where you see you've met my sister and you see me and forever I will have a question mark. Well, Although I believe my parents have been honest with me, I will forever mm -hmm. say what happened. Yeah. <laughs> or she should be saying what happened. Well, I think I look exactly like my old man. I think I look a lot like my, my dad. Mm -hmm. But Well then okay, then you're then well then your sister should be saying what happened. I think maybe maybe so. <laughs> it's a little strange. Yeah, because you But it can, I've also, you know, it can happen with brothers and sisters that there's not, you know. I mean, if my sister looked like me, she'd be one butt ugly woman. <laughs> I beg to differ. <laughs> oh, but then again, you know what? Here, here's, I got the perfect couple that proves you're wrong. Okay. And we, and, and we just saw them at, unfortunately, you weren't there at the Broyhill wedding. Right. Jim McClure and his sister. Yes. They, they look the same. They, they, now they look related. They look related, but, but they, she's a hottie. They look related, but she is just a total POA. Yeah, and has a chin. And she has a chin. Yeah. You know, I when mean, you look at young pictures of my mom and you look at young pictures, uh, that is what it is, is my sister got more of my mom than I did. Well, that's, hey, that's, that's what it is. Tiger. You know, you can take that out of context. Yeah. How? How? No, I don't know. How do you make it ugly? I, I could. I, I won't. Don't make it ugly. I won't. Uh, Rob believes he has found a, a tape, though, of my... Your birth uh, father. My birth father. All right. All right, let's listen. I love to play in the mud because I wasn't the fastest guy in the world, but you put us in mud, and I'm just as fast as most of the guys. Most guys can't run in mud. You Don Huff. Love of the game. I got his looks. You lucky man. You got his toughness. Yeah. You got his brains. Stop. No. No, you don't think I got those? No, I know you didn't get those. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hello? Are you saying I'm dumb? No. <laughs> no, not absolutely you. not. Thank was, you for answering for me, I was, sir. I was talking to my friend Mike. Oh, okay. Hello. What's cracking, fellas? Hey, hi there. Um, Don, you yeah. know how Frida never says, uh, she loves you when uh, y'all get ready to hang up off the phone. I mean, she only does that on the radio. No, well, yeah, on the radio. Yeah, yeah, right. But I got some information for you that is it's a sure thing that'll help you out. All right, go ahead. 
Don't say it to her. Uh, when you're on the radio, listen, don't I'm, say it at all. No, listen, I've tried it. You, you forget that and come next uh, Thursday, we'll have been married 22 years. Ago. Oh, I know that. I've tried it. I know that. I listen to you every day. I know that you know that, but I don't know if you know that if I just say to her, all right, baby, I'll see you later, that she knows... See, the thing is, this is part of being married a long time. It, it, it was about this time yesterday we were having the pussy whip discussion. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, she yeah. Knows, she knows that if I don't say I love you, that I'm saying it because I'm expecting her to say, how come you didn't say you love me? Because it's about this time every day on the show that I get just a little bit pensive. And because <laughs> she knows that I know, and I know that she knows, it'll say, never mind. Thank you, though. But look. And Mike... I'm all right, Don. Mike, come on. I'm okay. It's just this time of day. It's about 5.30 every day. Come on. Pull yourself out of it. I'll be all right. Don and Mike, hello. Hey, what's Thank going on? Thank you, Rob. Thank you for trying to cheer me up. Hey, hello. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Okay. I got a story about you were talking about the uh, how you painted most of the rooms in your beach house there I, in college. No, you know what? My, my wife is going to be pissed at me if I continue talking mm -hmm. about painting rooms yeah. in my, in my uh, beach place. However, I am looking uh, on the phones now for someone who's actually donated to a sperm. What are you doing, Mike? You know what it is. A sperm donor. What are you doing? You know how I, uh, I out in bum F, I don't get the Washington Post, and I just started grabbing it here so I can look at it every day. Yeah. And I'm reading. Did you read the Art Buckwald today? Yeah. Oh, yeah. About. You know, I closed. I'm selling my house today. About how there is a, a gigantic uh, job market. I read this this yeah. morning. There, uh, not a job market, but there's real estate market. Real estate market. Because what what this real estate agent does is she finds people who are divorced and she immediately says to them, "Do you want to sell your house?" Mm -hmm. Says despite the flat economy, the real estate market is still booming. Yep. This is because the divorce rate is you know, all. I'm high. And Rob wrote down, fun, delight, joy, in, in front of me. And today was the day, you know, that I'm sitting in there with with, with the ex and sitting across from the, the the happy couple that's buying the home. And it's just, uh, you know, it, even though it, it's, 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 I'm glad to be free of it, it's just kind of a drag. It's a drag because it is kind of closure on that on that part of my life. So no, you're in a Buckingham's type mode right now. Yeah. What's a what's a Buckingham? Kind, kind of, of a drag. drag. <laughs> <laughs> when you know me, don't love you. You know I'm really not. It's not that bad. It's not. It's really not that bad. But it is really. You bought your house from a divorced couple. Oh my God, we like got you, you, you bought got your house deal. from a War of the Roses, right? We got the best. Uh, I'm fortunate to live in a great house. When we pulled up, I said uh, that we were uh, freedom took with like eight thousand cookie cutter McMansions, mm -hmm. and every time it was like, ugh, yeah. God, colonial. I don't want to live in Williamsburg. Finally, we pull up to this house, and as we pull up to the driveway, I swear to God, I said to the real estate agent, mm -hmm. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. She said, you don't know anything about it. I said, I know what I like. I'll take it. Yep. We get inside. We look at it. It was our dream house. We still live there now, 11 years later, and she said, you're really going to be able to get this house cheap, mm -hmm. and I'm like, Right? You know, meanwhile, I, I'm so stupid, I would have said, just tell me how much and I'll pay. She said, because this couple was like War of the Roses. Right. That this guy done, had done all types of awful stuff, and, and then she went and she tried to get money from him, and that he had philandered all the money, and mm -hmm. they were flat broke, and then they just needed to unload this house as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Our prices are insane. Yep. So, uh, you know, at first we left the house, and, and Friedel and I had a serious discussion. Is this a bad omen that we're buying a house with a couple that had, you know, mm -hmm. tragic divorce? Where like the, and, and the yeah. real estate agent showed us <laughs> right here where she threw a vase at him one time. And the, that's, wow. what, that's what this article's about is, is yeah. that, uh, you know, there, there's this house, it's a little fixer-upper. you got to fix this hole and that hole. And, <laughs> you know. Well, Mike, I'm sorry you're feeling that way. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm not. Isn't it rich? <laughs> I'm all right. At least we don't play all by myself anymore. And you know, we didn't have the quick fire sale on ours. You know, we uh, we waited a year, over a year, to sell it. Here at last on the ground. There you go. Yes. Stop playing this. Win. You brought it that's, up. That's funny. That is that is funny. Don't and stop looking at me, everybody. Send in Rob. <laughs> stop looking at me like real. The all right. Time. We're looking at you real. Don't look at me like that. Like, I'm fine. Everything's all right now. I'm sorry I brought it up. I very I, like how. Look at me. I don't. <laughs> oh, that's a sad look. Oh dear. Why I drink? <laughs> no problem. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. See, that's why you should get the paper in the morning. Don't read it when you come to work. Get it in the morning. Read it. Digest it. Mm -hmm. And and then you know. 
Really? You're well, I still would have brought it up, probably. Yeah. You know, I mean, because it's been, it's been on my mind. But it's fresher. Yeah, you're right. It's fresher. I just read it before the show. Don and Mike show. Yeah, when uh, my parents got divorced, um, they had this house out in Pennsylvania that was probably about $1.7 million. And my mom was making it so hard for my dad that he decided to let it go at auction for about eight fifty. Okay, that's, that's, an, that's not the same ballpark, but that sounds very similar to the <laughs> sweetheart deal we walked in on. Good example. Yeah. Oh, one acre pond, uh, you could put a. T- I mean, yeah, it was nice. I didn't get to go much. Hey, hold on. They got a guy who's actually been to a sperm bank. Good. Hold on a second. Uh, oh, but Mike, first, here you go. Hold on. Got somebody for you. Hello. Hi. Hi there. Hey, Mike, I did the same thing yesterday. You mean you uh, sold a house that you had lived in with your husband? The marital home. The marital home. You got rid of the marital <laughs> home. It. It's kind of a yeah. drag, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I'm so happy to not be married anymore, but I've been in a total funk. Can I ask you a uh, question? Ma'am, please. hold on. I want to ask you a personal question. Let me take you off the air for a second. Okay. Hold on, hold on please. No good can come of this, ladies and gentlemen. I have worked with this gentleman for 18 no, years. Listen, He's trying to help you're not on the air now. What's your no, first name? No, no, no good can come of this. What's your name? I'm being exploited now. Liz, where are you just... from? Are you? Uh, how old are you? 34. Would you, uh, on a scale of one to ten, please, very honest, uh, rate your rate your appearance on a one to ten. This could be good. No, Buzz. This couldn't be good. A seven. What what color is your hair? Brown. <laughs> Might, might I ask your... No, you're not on the air. I swear to God. Might, might I ask your breast size? Stop it. I may not. Oh. Oh, Would you, you say go. you're medium? Would you... you... You know, you're talking to a lady who might be in a little pain. I, I know she might be in pain, Mike. That she was happy. Um, yeah, she said she was happy because she doesn't want to be married anymore. Right? Listen, so you just had the same thing guy. with your house yesterday as Mike did? Just for that guy. You know what, you know what would make you feel better? You got together tonight with Mike. <laughs> Stop it. And you really, I don't know if you were listening before, when we were, when we were talking about what we like girls to do in bed. <laughs> Mike, Mike would love you to play with his butt. <laughs> with his Stop it. Hold on. Now I'll put you back on the air for your answer. Stop it. Hold on, please. Stop. What if she says yes? <laughs> Shut up, Buzz. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just wondered. I'll take it from him. Hello. Just ask. Hi. Okay, what's your answer? Hey, Mike, I hope you feel better. No, I don't. So, I'm sorry that you're going through it. It sucks. That's right. I, no, I'm fine. It's it's no problem. Yeah. All right, honey. Well, uh, nice chatting with you. And, and thank, you for your, <laughs> thank you for your sympathy. And, and really, enjoy your life. Got to go now. Got to run. Okay. Bye-bye. Uh, one last question. What song did your husband dance to as he left the attorney's office yesterday? Oh, <laughs> oh never she's known. Gone. She's gone. I had to be cruel to her. She turned yeah. down. Yeah. I don't. She turned, she turned I don't want you to pimp for me. I've told you that before. Isn't Stop it? pimping for me. <laughs> Makes me uncomfortable. She's trying to help. I know you are. Just need to have your knob polished. Okay. You're a good. You're a good friend. I mean, and, and I mean that seriously. That's not a problem. You incidentally, went, you went through a. a that's not, excuse me. That's not a problem. Incidentally. But uh, okay, will you get your knob polished tonight? I don't know. Well, you should have a knob polisher on demand. I do. For a day, for a day like today. I don't need. No, I don't. I don't. It, it's, it's, go, you got these head things happening today. I'm fine. It was emotional. You got rid of the house. I'm fine. I've got a she very good there. circle of friends that I hang out with, and that that does it for me. It works for me. Circle, circle, yes. <laughs> circle. Yeah, a circle. Sure. Yeah. yeah. We'll have a circle, Jay. <laughs> okay. Hello, John and Mike. Hey, it's the how you doing guy who has come out of retirement. And I think he's doing a save the clown. Uh, I appreciate your sympathy, how you doing guy. <laughs> how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Doing great. How you doing, how you doing guy? Hey there. How you been? Hey there. Oh, good. You know, this is the original how you doing guy, right? Yeah. Hey there. Yeah, call more often, okay? Hey there. All right, listen. Um, oh, Joe's Book Club is coming up. Uh, take us to break here. How you doing, guy? Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Talk back. You're up next. Hi, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm fine. First, I just wanted to say that I have two friends listening to you down in Virginia Way. Oh, great. Hello to the folks in Virginia. Yeah, I couldn't make it down to their wedding. I just wanted to congratulate my, my girlfriend, Lisa, who married my husband, Charlie. Your girlfriend, Lisa? Yes. Uh, who married your husband, Charlie? 
Oh, I see. Yes, they eat BM on the Don and Mike show. Uh, and I propose the toast. Oh, you are so ho, 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 not funny. Oh. The Don and Mike show. They have the best radio show on the radio. Don and Mike. Excuse me, I was uh, getting uh, things set up in here for my man, uh, Joe. Uh, Joe. Joe is regretful. Uh, come in here, Joe, please. Time for uh, what's rapidly becoming a favorite bit on this show. People yes. do judge you by the words you use. <laughs> Get ready, when you everybody. speak well, yeah. you command respect. Get ready for another exciting edition of... Joe Ardinger's Book Club. Yeah. Joe or Peace Joe. Theater. Now, Joe, uh... The book you've selected today is the uh, classic Sea Biscuit. Sea Biscuit, very popular book uh, with the movie out now, and uh, wonderful, wonderful little book. Uh, Joe will be reading uh, as long as time allows the chapters, uh, chapter 17, the ding bustiest contest you ever clapped an eye on. Chapter number 20, all four of his legs are broken. Oh, dear. And chapter 21, <laughs> a, long, a long, hard pull. Right. So now, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, here is our friend Joe Ardinger. Welcome to Joe's Book Club. Again, Joe's selection today, <laughs> Sea Biscuit. And now, <laughs> here, Joe is regretful, is Joe. Joe. The ding bustiest contest you ever clapped an eye on. Lynn Howard was in one of those moods during which crazy ideas sound perfectly sensible. A bullish, handsome man with decisive eyebrows and more hair than he could find use for. <laughs> Lynn had a great deal of money and a habit of having things go his way. So many things in his life had gone his way that it no longer occurred to him not to be in a festive mood. He spent much of his time celebrating the general goodness of things and sitting with old friends telling fat, happy lies. But things had not gone Lynn's way lately, and he was not accustomed to the feeling. See, now, this is so much better than the Bible. Yeah, it is better than the Bible. It's already better than the Bible. And I understand that the reason was Joe actually felt very strongly about the Bible. Yeah. Ah, not really. <laughs> not really. All right, well, that's what I heard. That's the scuttlebutt I heard. Just trying to pass on the ever-loving light of the Lord, Don. There you go. That's what... Lynn wanted in the worst way to whip his father into at racing, to knock his sea biscuit down a peg or two, and he believed he had the horse to do it in Ligarodi. Yes. He was sure enough about it to have made some account-closing bets on the horse, at least one as a side wager with his father, and he was a great deal poorer for it. Breathe. The last race really ate at him. Ligarodi had been at Seabiscuit's throat in the Hollywood Gold Cup when another horse had bumped him right out of his game. He had streaked down the stretch to finish fourth and had come back a week later to score a smashing <laughs> victory over Witchy in a Hollywood stakes race, firmly establishing himself as the second best horse in the West. This might be my, my favorite Crosby bit that we do. And were certain that with a weight break and a clean trip, Ligarodi... And Sea Biscuits measure, measure. Charles Howard didn't see it that way. Since the race, he had been going around with pockets full of clippings about Sea Biscuit. Anytime anyone came near him, he would wave the articles around and start gushing like a new father. The senior Howard probably didn't hold back when Lynn was around. He was immensely proud of Lynn's success with Ligarotti, but he enjoyed tweaking his son, and he was good at it. He had once given Lynn a book for Christmas entitled... What you know about horses? The pages were, pages were blank. Let's move to the next chapter, Joe. What's the next chapter? All four of his legs are broken. Uh oh. Oh, here we go. And uh, once again, you're listening to the Joe Ardinger Book Club today. Joe reads from Sea Biscuit. In mid-November, after five months in bed, Pollard emerged from Winthrop Hospital, stabbing at the ground with his crutches and swinging his legs along. He returned to the world a changed man. His body was still wasted. His face was withered and old. His career was dead. He was homeless. And because he had no insurance, he hadn't a cent left to his name. Insurance. The Howards <laughs> asked him to come live with them at Ridgewood. Pollard accepted. His doctor drove him to the airport, and Agnes rode along with them. Pollard promised her that once he was established, he would send for her and they would marry. 
Agnes watched him bump up to the plane and wondered if he would live to see her again. I, right now, I'm just picturing all over the Beltway and highways throughout this country, mm -hmm. Ma's and Pa's pulling their, their, you know, their, their carriages, their, their, their modern horseless carriages off to the side of the road, turning up the radio and How about a story? And kids, have a listen. Listen to this. This is the story of Seabiscuit. And listen to this marvelous gentleman. This is better than any book on tape. Enjoy a good read. When Pollard arrived in California... He went to Tanferan to see the racetrackers again. <laughs> his appearance stunned everyone. On the back stretch, his old contract trainer, Russ McGurr, saw the young man whom he had once purchased as a bug boy for a bridle, a saddle, and a few sacks of oats. A bridle. McGurr burst into tears as they embraced. Into tears. <laughs> Pollard settled in at Ridgewood. He was determined to heal and get back to riding. So he tossed away his crutches and tried to walk. It was a mistake. On one of the Ridgewood Hills, he set his foot down wrong in a ditch hidden in the grass. The leg came down on an oblique angle and snapped. Yeah. The Howards rushed Pollard to the hospital Charles had built in memory of his lost son and called Doc Babbitt. Right, Joe, uh, we're going to break in there and ask you to go to the third chapter for the final part of the reading of Seabiscuit today, what, which chapter is this, Joe? A Long Hard Pull. Seabiscuit, everybody, on the Joe Ardinger Book Club. Agnes Conlon joined Red Pollard's Strange World on April 10, 1939. Back in Willits, <laughs> Doc Babcock had finally set Pollard's leg properly, and it was beginning to heal. He limped out of the hospital early in early spring. Babcock sent him... <laughs> With a stern warning, his leg would not stand the rigors of riding. If he went back to racing, he could be crippled for the rest of his life. He must never mount a horse again, Pollard smiled. <laughs> then I reckon I'll have to find somebody to boost me up, he said. Pollard took up residence at Ridgewood and immediately called for Agnes to come marry him. With no money to spare, they planned for a quiet private weekday wedding, a, quiet. a modest honeymoon, and then Pollard would begin his long journey back to the saddle. Red wanted to be sure that she got the wedding gift she wanted most, a diamond watch, so he mailed her what little money he had so she could put, pick it out herself. You know, you know what, and this is not part of the bit, but why don't you just go to the last page of the book? Very good. And, and yeah, just read us the surprise ending. I, I don't think I'm ruining the movie for anybody because the book's no, been out there forever. And anybody that wants it could probably turn their radios down. The last page. But you'd be On the morning of May 17, 1947, <laughs> Marcella met her husband at breakfast and told him his rough little horse was gone, dead of an apparent heart attack at the relatively youthful age of 14. <laughs> the one-time bicycle repairman whose own heart would fail him just three years later was beside himself with grief. I never dreamed, he said, the old boy would go down so quickly. Someone broke the news to Pollard, who was plugging away on claimers at Suffolk Downs. His mind rolled back over all those years. It seems only yesterday, he said. Howard had the body carried to a secret site on the ranch. After Seabiscuit was buried, the old owner planted an oak sapling over him. Howard, a vigorously public man, made his last gesture to his horse a private one. He told only his son's location of the grave and let the oak stand as the only marker. Somewhere in the high country that was once Ridgewood, the tree lives on, watching over the bones of Howard's beloved sea biscuit. People do judge you by the words you use. When you speak well, you command respect. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, that's yeah, beautiful, you know, Joe. We should just give away Kleenex like you call our 100 after oh, we get done. Isn't that incredible? Bad. That's moving. Joe Ardinger's book club, this time, Seabiscuit. A great reading. Um, a lot of times, you know, they're saying grown men are crying because of this story. That's right. Well, you can tell. And you know what? More, the, more at the movie, perhaps, because you've got the visual, but I think oh. as far as that dramatic reading is concerned, it'll make you cry. nothing more emotional. There are and, he, and he only re read a small segment of yeah. it. Yeah, and imagine. And for my money, why go to the movie now? I've lived it. I'm, you know, you no bigger guy looking forward to going to see Seabiscuit than me. Ruined. I'm not going now because I, I feel I've, got, I've gotten it. Well, what can it do but let you down? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. After you, you've used your mind's eye, That's the right. words of a great storyteller, what can Tobey Maguire possibly deliver 
The Joe Ardinger didn't. Huh? Joe is regretful. Joe. Beautiful job, Joe. There he is, everybody. It's fantastic. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's a great bit. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's great. Oh, man, I just can't wait for the next reading. Yeah. Well, you have to wait a couple of weeks. The we next dramatic reading. We can't We can't do this all the time, but uh, we, we've got another book lined up. <laughs> More than just a horse's tail, Don, a Joe tail. Yeah. <laughs> that's a great bit. <laughs> Cracks, you Remark. Know, and you got to see the visual. Yeah. You have to see him actually holding the book up, mm -hmm. struggling to, to actually do the best possible reading that he can. Squinting. I love that idiot. Just a compelling, just as compelling today as it was in 1938. <laughs> Reading the reviews on the back of the book. <laughs> They're applying, applying it to Joe. Anyway, thank you, Joe. Great job as always. Captivating, Joe. Stay tuned. Two or three weeks now. We're going to put this on our regular rotation until we get tired of it. But uh, Joe read that with the blistering pace of... Biscuit himself and the charm of a grand legend. We've got, we got an even better book next time. And now let's go over to uh, Buzz, uh, Buzz Girdley, yeah. man who loves and would like to have more number three in his life. In a world where only the radio was <laughs> strictly <laughs> forbidden, one that? man found a way to bring good news to his people. He's right down. Mm -hmm. He made it up. Well, Buzzy Burbank. Uh, Buzz, what is your lead story today? Today, President Bush says there ought to be a law. Nice Bush against gay marriages. Really? Yes. Really? And you know what's funny is he's, he's going on vacation to Texas. Mm -hmm. You know, where sodomy is legal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Courage. Coincidence? I don't think so. Yeah, okay. But only if you go, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so stay, tuned to stay, tuned stay tuned for news and comments coming, coming up <laughs> on the Don and Mike Don Show. And that, that whole thing, that was very professional. This is the Don and Mike Show. What's the word from Planet Crackpot? The Don and Mike Show. Broadcasting in black and white as an infinity cost-cutting measure. The Don and Mike Show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. got four minutes to get Sabian to you. Time for uh, news and comments now with our friend Guy Birdley. Uh, Buzz's new show. Yes, for Sabian. Brought to you by... Veramax, the sexual pleasure performance enhancer. Someone call for a doctor. Get it at 35,000 retail locations. New double strength Veramax Ultra. Get it by calling 1 Triple H Tri VMAX. Call 1 Triple H Tri VMAX. Yeah. Gloria Gaynor. <laughs> I know. Did you put that away already, Rob? Oh, just, just, just one or two more. <laughs> What do you think Sabian can do? He can't do anything to stop it. No. Right. So find Sabian. <laughs> Today's best disco. Now get me Sabian! Yeah! No, no, no. Sabian's not here in 20 minutes. You die. Now someday we'll live in a world where people dig the fact yeah. that even if you're on a rock station mm -hmm. or a talk station, mm -hmm. a goddamn record was out when? 1974? Right. You do the math. <laughs> 84, 94, 29 years ago. Mm -hmm. Someone who was 18 years old when that song came out, or even lower, 15. Right. 15 and 29, Rob, is? 44. 44. Mm -hmm. That's right in the demo. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about that? That's why... We play those songs. Amen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Duh. Must be pretty. <laughs> Duh. Of course, there's lots of program directors just rather have us play that angry, mm -hmm. you know, stuff that's out today. Yeah. But we're not angry. No. Unless we're talking about the guys that don't understand why we play Gloria Gaynor. <laughs> then we get angry. Then we're angry. Yeah. But most of the time when we're listening to Gloria Gaynor, we're happy. <laughs> and now here's Buzz. Hi, Don and Mike. Well, President Bush was somewhere in the middle and had to take a stand. On his left was the recent Supreme Court ruling striking down laws against gay sex. The thinking's been this opens the door for gay marriages. On his right, conservatives who want a constitutional amendment outlawing gay marriage. Now, the president doesn't want that amendment, but yesterday he said he does want a law. Marriage, he said, is between a man and a woman. We ought to codify that. We've got lawyers looking at the best way to do that. Asked for his opinion of homosexuality, Mr. Bush said, I am mindful that we are all sinners. Love is not a sin, replied a gay rights advocate. 
That prompted the White House to later say that the president didn't mean to label gays as sinners. He's such a dope. One conservative. He is. Honest to God. I mean, you know, he's the leader of the free world, and mm -hmm. we have to do all that stuff to stand up and say, you know, fight terror. But you know what? Really, on stuff like this, mm -hmm. just stay out of it. What a dope. Just go Let to the courts do it. Go to Texas. You know, put on the put on that Don Imus hat. <laughs> Chill out for a while, dude. Well, one conservative leader says the president had to take a stand that to appear neutral would have been political suicide. He may be I disagree with that, incidentally. I don't know who's giving him the political advice, but I think Mike, uh, Bill O'Reilly, uh, yeah, Rush right. Limbaugh, uh, G. Gordon, uh, d d you but, know, uh, underpants, all of them. <laughs> Something kind of interesting has happened with public opinion in the last few months. Gay acceptance was at an all-time high earlier this year at around 65%. Now it's back down to around 48%. Now with Rob. Was it the Supreme Court ruling that caused this backlash or the growing presence of gay TV shows or both or neither or something else entirely? No one really seems to know. I think it's Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. And that's, that's what's done it. And I hate to pull back the curtain here. Are, am I in both channels? Because it just sounds all of a sudden that I'm only in the right channel. You're high, Buzz. Really? You, you, I mean, yeah, your, your level is absolutely 12 o'clock. Well, whatever it was, I haven't had enough. Mick Jagger says it may have been the Stones... Uh, hey, this is Keith. Yeah, the riches. So John and Mike. Mick Jagger says it may have been the Stones' biggest crowd ever. 400,000 tickets were sold at 16 bucks a piece for the 11-hour show that featured them and a host of other stars. The concert was in Toronto to help that city bounce back from the economic hit it took from the SARS. Good for Mick. Hundreds of millions of tourist dollars were lost and 700 million health care dollars were spent. Where was the concert? This was in Toronto. <laughs> That's right. Great White North. It's a beauty way to go. Now, to make the $7 million concert happen, Canada put up $2.5 million on... Ontario. Ontario proper put up another one and a half million. And the Molson Brewery kicking for Well, you know where the uh, Molson Brewery is located? It's in the Great White North. Yeah, Canada. The profits will be split between Toronto's health care and tourist industries. Toronto, Canada. Hey, Buzz. Yes. One more question. What's that? Never mind. Uh, it's Mike. Hey, Mike. What's your favorite ginger ale? Canada Dry. John. He's the only Buzz. He's yeah. I would have said Seagram's. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you ask me what my favorite whiskey is? What's your favorite whiskey? Canadian Club. But you know what my favorite pizza is? What? Canadian bacon. <laughs> okay, I got one more. Rob? Yeah. What's your favorite candy? Love them Canadian men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just when you think it's yeah. gone, yeah. it ain't gone. Do you feel that uh, cold temperature we had yesterday? What it, was that? It was a Canadian high. If <laughs> you don't stop it, I'm going to call the Canadian Mounties. <laughs> <laughs> Former Superman star Christopher Reeve is in Israel this week studying their methods of treating spinal injuries. Where's our Israel song? <laughs> We, we have one. I know we've got it. Hold on. Let me give you an intro, though. This is Michael Hoffman, <laughs> and you're listening to Jew to Jew. <laughs> the paralyzed actor also hopes to further his campaign for stem cell research, which is a big part of the Israeli methods now. He's also visiting Jerusalem's Western Wall and meeting with Prime Minister Ariel Sharon. I saw him on Larry King last night, and he speaks uh, much better. He's really improved a lot. Than, than he, I mean, are they actually... They're talking about what he he feels uh, he can move his fingers now and stuff. Yeah, increasingly. Yeah. Is there a chance that this? I mean, this could really be happening. He's pushing for it. But I he just should. well, somebody else is pushing him to push for it. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. He's in that chair. But mm -hmm. uh, the thing that I noticed was that he's he shaved his head, mm -hmm. and uh, you know they were asking him in a roundabout way, did you have to do this because you know whatever? And he, no, just a choice. Mm -hmm. The hair was a hassle. Well, he's speaking better, and, and, and when you hear that he's moving his fingers and toes, I mean, mm -hmm. that would be... Encouraging. And that's strange. I mean, that it's actually... Maybe they are making progress with that. And now, you actually can tug on Superman's cape. 
like everything else these days, it's up oh, for auction. eBay. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Well, actually, no. This is an auction house in Los Angeles well, that's doing this. Yeah, um, but don't think that I didn't get, mm -hmm. maybe conservatively yesterday, ten emails from friends of mine right. saying, you really should bid on Superman's cape. It's cool. I've seen the pictures of it. I would like to have it. I mean, I think it's that cool. It's the original suit from the original TV show that debuted in the 1950s. It's the one George Reeves wore. The first you guys think it might be bad luck. Started the curse. Mm -hmm. The Los Angeles Auction House Profiles in History is hoping to get 150 grand for the suit. It's also selling, and I wouldn't mind having this either, the robot, robotic hand from TV's The Addams Family, the character known as... The Thing. Thing. Yeah. Um, also up for bid, Jim Carrey's Riddler costume from the movie Batman Forever. No thing. Oh, I can smell that. Along with Arnold's gloves from Terminator 2. Yeah. And Mel Brooks' first screenplay for the movie The, Pro the Producers. All of a sudden, I can't talk. You know what? <laughs> I, I would love it. I've loved it ever since I was a kid. I'll never get it. One of the real cowls. That Adam West wore mm -hmm. when he was Batman. Are they available? Batman. I know that. One with like the little white line above the eyes. Yeah, yeah. right. The eyebrow. Right. He's got one, mm -hmm. and that was an original one that he used on the show. Now here you're going to be just amazed at my scary knowledge of this. Right. In his possession, he has one that he used on the show that he will never part with. Fair enough. He has two other ones that were used as, as you know, extras mm -hmm. that he wears when he goes like to a car show. But it's still the guy that played Su uh, Batman that's, that wears those cowls. So, so technically it would really be his, right? Yeah, they'd be his. But he's got three, and he's not selling them. There were, I think, four others that have already been sold. They're already gone. Some guy Are they worth there. anything? Wow. I, I think the last one sold this goes to Floria. $280,000. Jesus. Just for the Batman cowl. Wow. I would have thought maybe fifteen grand, and that I thought would be too high. Please, two hundred and eighty grand? Maybe it, it included the cape. Still, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Now I saw this dude on the Today Show, this guy who's got all these costumes from all these TV shows, mm -hmm. and I think he paid something like five hundred thousand dollars for the entire Batman costume. And really, most mm -hmm. of those guys don't pay that kind of money mm -hmm. unless they're reasonably sure that it's going to be more valuable ten years down the road. And that guy was on this bandwagon a long time ago. I know the guy you're talking about. He had an agreement with Carson before this collecting stuff started. Oh, yeah, he's got his desk. And he got the Karnak hat just because Carson said, yeah, when it's all over, you can have it. And now wow. they're covered with his DNA. <laughs> <laughs> I know we had that discussion earlier, but this, sure. guy, this guy just goes out to the warehouse and goes, mm, let's see, what will it be today? Lost in space? No, I don't think so. You know what? Get me the shoe phone from Get Smart. Oh. Yeah, and it makes it more valuable. Oh. And he grinds it in with his foot. Oh, yeah. You know, really, it does make it more valuable. $3,000 a month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Last year, the same option. Auction House, by the way, sold Shatner's command chair from the original Star Trek. What, five cents? A very... I don't know what the price <laughs> it's like is. like you don't like that. See, right right now. So you don't like the old, but if it was the next generation uh, chair, you'd think it was valuable. That was a cool show. Yeah. <laughs> With a cooler yeah. chair. And I still like I still like the original Star Trek. Sometimes right. if, I'm, if I'm watching on, on sci-fi, I'll watch it. Mm -hmm. And the thing that bothers me now about Star Trek TNG mm -hmm. is that... Uh, it's already now, it's only been off the air, how long, like nine years, something like that? If I, yeah. It was ahead of its time technology-wise. Now it looks dated. Wow. You look at it now, and it's like, God damn, it looks so phony. Mm. You can tell when they're, when they're standing in 10 forward, when they're looking out in space, mm -hmm. that they're really just little Christmas lights against a black velvet background. Right. Mm -hmm. And when, when they go to warp speed, when, this, when you know, 10 years ago, you went, God damn, it really looks like... Right. Now it looks like, you know, some guy on his home PC mm -hmm. doing a little thing. It just, it, it looks, and all the aliens always look the same. Yeah. They always have big foreheads. Right. And they just, it just doesn't cut it. Yeah. Looks like real humans in those costumes. A very girly well, show. And, and you know what, uh, what's his name? John Luke Picard. Yes. What Patrick Stewart always used to say. Yeah. His, his big thing, which I still say to this day. It just doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> I was going to say what he wanted the Enterprise to go forward. A, a very girly show will end in a very girly way. In the final episodes of Sex in the City to air next January on HBO, Sarah Jessica Parker's character finally ends, or finds rather, her true love in a character played by ballet dancer Mikhail Baryshnikov. Here's what Sarah had to say. <laughs> <laughs> so what they're, they're doing is they're doing the, they're kind of mirroring 
Candy's life, Candace Bush. Uh, yes, and she actually she married a dancer. She right. married a ballet dancer. I've forgotten about that. Well, in this story, however, uh, Misha will play an artist, not a dancer, but he does sweep her off her feet and into New York's elite art world. Oh, f me, Misha. <laughs> he, uh, Misha. He'll, he'll play a guy who has qualities her previous squeezes lacked: honor and chivalry. Ugh. The show's fans chatting online are thrilled with all of this. I think she ought to marry Big. Yes. No, nope, not gonna happen. And although nothing will ruin this happy ending with Mikhail Baryshnikov, one guy, played by X-Files' David Duchovny, will throw a temporary wrench in the works. So last night, whatever. Wife, last night, my wife calls me. She's leaving New York, packing up that place up there. And right. she says, oh, we, you know, I didn't see sex in the city. Please, please TiVo, a TiVo, a TiVo. So I was sitting in the room, and it, it says, you must change channel to, mm-hmm. to say, yeah, all right, I'll, I'll watch it for a second. And I watch it, and first off, she's obviously pregnant. Right. So they're not masking it very well. Well, no, I didn't think, at least the episode last night, they didn't do a good job uh, of masking it. Yeah, I hate it when they have her in a bikini. (laughs) (laughs) Well, they actually had her in, like, uh, like see-through tops. Right. Because, you know, she never shows anything. No, right. And where you would see the bra and you'd see, like, the old woman underpants. (laughs) Uh, The the, the Carter farters? Yeah, right. (laughs) The ones that the high where, where, you know, the the bastard Broderick baby was. (laughs) (laughs) The the bastard Broderick baby? Well, you know, little, it's the vehicular manslaughter. That you're, yeah, little, little, little. He's little, legitimate. Little baby, uh, you know, manslaughter. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's why. That's why you label them. But they're perfectly. The baby is perfectly legit. Well, yeah, you know, they've been married for years before she got pregnant. I know they have, but just think about the soul of that poor guy that he killed in Ireland <laughs> I never and got away with just because he, he was Ferris Bueller. You never forget. But anyway, as I was watching this thing, it was the one that was on Sunday, so bear with me if you saw it. Uh, but uh, Mr. Big calls her up. Yes. Right. And he's out on the golf course, and, and I'm thinking, if it, you know, it's, it's a chick show to begin with, and I really don't watch it except to make my wife happy right. when we watch it together, but... I do like that guy that plays Mr. Big, and I kind of like his character. Chris Knopf. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's like, I think most people would have, even, even I think chicks would agree. Uh, I think it'd be great if that Big, she always went back to him, and, and he always was kind of crazy. They, they match up well as actors, too. There's good chemistry there. Yeah. Marrying a Ruski. But now they bring Mikhail Burisnikov, and I think that's going to that's gonna suck. And the guy that she's with now, this this guy with the, with the you know, the, the frizzed out hair and the, mm-hmm. the three-day growth of beard. Right. Who broke up with her by putting a post-it note on her computer, mm-hmm. and then it ends with her just getting a, a, a vase full of flowers and knocking them on the floor, and mm-hmm. it's like they pan out for the big dramatic look, and I, you know, think of this, what, this is, yeah. this is Sex in the City? The yeah. Emmy-winning comedy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> like a menopause, period, in the city. This show tastes, this show tastes like period. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who discovered Elvis is dead. Record producer Sam Phillips, who founded Sun Records, passed yesterday at the age of 80. Elvis went to that Memphis studio in 1953 to record a happy birthday record for his mamo. Sam heard him and gave that boy a contract. If he was anything... Um. There we go, Elvis. I'd like to try to do my uh, latest record. I tried it last night and didn't make it. I don't know the words to it, so uh, I had to read it. If we give it up, just, you know, please forgive us. (laughs) I was going to say that the... uh... The movie Great Balls of Fire with Dennis Quaid. If this guy who you're talking about just passed away, is anything like the guy in the movie that plays him? That guy with the black hair all slicked back? Yeah. Well, let's go to Elvis expert Rob Spiewak, who will tell us why Sam Phillips was the dumbest man of all time. Sam Phillips was nuts. Right. He really was. He got his start as a radio station engineer Mm -hmm. and then built a recording studio because he could. He did all this stuff, but he let Elvis' contract go for 35 grand. Oh, my God. And, I mean, even back then, a lot of money. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, I love that guy that plays him in, in Great oh, Balls of Fire, great. though. You know? great. Yeah. Come on, son. Come on, son. <laughs> I want you two to put your grievances behind you. <laughs> yeah. Sam produced E's first record, That's All Right, Mama. But his daughter, uh, and God lives to this day, uh, Bonnie. <laughs> Bonnie Phillips. Bonnie Phillips? Oh, I'm sorry. Who's the lady? Who can Mackenzie. Mackenzie Phillips. Mackenzie Phillips. Oh, Mackenzie Phillips. I'm thinking of Bonnie, Bonnie Frank. Frank. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, thinking of oldies 100. Sorry. Joe. Yeah, I'm sorry. I feel like Joe. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I feel like Charlie Brown and Lisa. Uh, Lisa. Uh, <laughs> Lucy, that Mr. Brown. just did an awful break. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> Please patronize these sponsors. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. 
Excuse me, I'm just on that website. Uh, question. Yes. Are ye getting the best value from ye wireless phone company? Does ye wireless phone keep ye connected with everyone that's important to ye? Well, that's the best reason for ye to call one eight six six singular and switch over to singular wireless. Just listen to the great deals ye can get. Right now, during their incredible summer phone sale, I want to pay attention. I'll say one thing is off the script. You can use these phones to call Canada. Yeah. Act now, because after August 3rd, the singular summer phone sale's over. What a great deal for ye. Keep connected all summer long by switching to singular wireless. For home delivery, call Singular at one eight six singular or go to Singular.com. Certain restrictions apply. See any Singular Ye store for details. This is the Don and Mike Show. Uh, gosh, I hate to interrupt. It's all been so incredibly fascinating and entertaining and instructive. Really, the time has just flown by. The Don and Mike Show. They're guys, guys. Don and Mike. Buzz, who am I to tell you how to uh-huh. decorate your, your, yeah. your cubicle? I'm you noticed that, too? Yeah, I, and I'm not G. Gordon Liddy. Right. Once uh, a pot of time had a, just a giant <laughs> heart on because Buzz had a picture of David Letterman in his, in his studio. Yeah. But... You got this thing on the wall that says Terps football. I'm in. Are you? Yeah. Uh, you know Maryland Terrapins. And right. All. Right. And the only reason that I would say are we carrying the Terps? No. And and this is the entire reason that I would say to Buzz, don't put that up. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Our radio station WJFK yeah. wanted the the play by play rights. Yeah. Were, were up this year for the Terrapins, who have been pretty well. Uh, representative football wise, not not only football but basketball. Mm-hmm. But we were going for the football rights, and we offered more money than any other radio station. And they went to WMAL because they didn't want to be associated with the shows on our station. There you go. There you go. The of it. Uh, but it's okay to be associated with, like, riots and fires, which they have when they win their, their little contest. Well, with them, it, we, the whole thing with them was, you know, well, we, no, we can't be on that station. No, absolutely. We can't be on that station. That was... God, that was like uh, nine months ago that they were trying. You know, meanwhile... Why do we have all this turp crap around here? Uh, because maybe they bought a schedule. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, listen, I'm sorry. I'm like uh, an elephant. Uh-oh. I don't forget. You know, people should tell us. <laughs> don't you think? If only they would. Yeah. Uh-huh. Big clients that come in, should they should tell us. I, but then again, I don't know if they're a client or not. You know, hold on. Let me just... I just think, wanted to... Do you think the workaholic's there? Which one? The building's full of them, Don. You can't say a generic thing like that. You should probably try Cameron. Cameron? Okay, what's his number? 872. Thanks, Charlie. Bye-bye. Let's find out, shall we? That's Charlie on the ball of Roy Hill, everybody. Mm-hmm. OTBB. OTBB. You sure you have the right number for Cameron? I don't think you do. Bend it. Bend it like Broyhill, Hill. That's what I say. <laughs> try the other one. That he's normally at. What number is that, Mike? Rob's got it. What is it, Rob? Hi, this is Cameron Gray. I'll dial it. Uh, well, actually, he's usually at this number. <laughs> that one there. Okay. I'm try that one. Oh, it's cell. It's yeah. Cell. Oh, it's cell phone. He'll be there, no doubt. All right. You get him this time. This guy is the... Like, Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited about the Terps. Hey, Cameron. Hi, Don. <laughs> Are they a client? I'm not really sure they're a client, but if they'd like to be on show, you can get them on WJFK. <laughs> and if I mention to you the Dunkin' Donuts, now it's coffee and a taste of caramel. <laughs> you or anybody you know can really be involved with all sorts of great things at WJFK. <laughs> How are you, Don? You know, Cameron, you really shouldn't do, like, commercials and stuff. Why wouldn't that be? Because you really don't have, like, a good radio delivery. I, I think that you're... I think the radio delivery that I have is probably one of the best ones that I can have. So if you'd like to have a delivery like me, make sure you come into that camera. <laughs> All right, well, why don't you introduce Buzz? We'll get back to the news now, then we'll yeah. find out if the Maryland Terps are actually going to, you know, buy commercials. First of all, thanks for everybody for listening to Don and Mike's show. And now, without further ado, here's Buzz Burbank, a newsman that does a really great newscast. <laughs> this is Cameron Gray saying, I love being me. Thanks, Professor. Thanks. Bye, John. Thanks, Ken. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>
This just in, Bob Hope is still dead. <laughs> now, everybody, don't start calling and saying we've lost listeners now. I met a woman the other night that looked me straight in the eyes, and I heard that thing you did with Bob Hope the other day, and I was personally offended, and she said it to me as she was laughing. <laughs> of course. What does that tell you? As she was laughing like Jack Cassidy. <laughs> Jack Cassidy. She glittered her teeth. Hello, Bo. Hello, Bob. <laughs> Welcome to heaven. Say, Bob. Would you like a cigarette in a cigarette holder or trying on my ascot? I'm Jack Cassidy. Hey, Bob. You have a swing? <laughs> I'm on the side? I'm a swinger. Hey, Bob, thanks for the memories. You could you could use some of my clothes. How about one of my smoking jackets, Colombo? <laughs> hey, Bob, why don't you do the Chris Farley on me with one of your golf clubs? Jack Cassidy. Do you know what that is, the Chris Farley? No. Have I ever said this on the air? No. Remember we no. had Tom Shales on about a year ago and he wrote the, this book live from New York, mm -hmm. Saturday right. night? Right. The book's like 800 pages long. Phenomenal book. Great book. And it has real quotes from all the members of Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. Buzz, I'm sorry, but this no, is it's okay. This is really good. trust me. I've said a lot of crap today, but this is going to be. I'm with you. This would be worth it. And crap, pun intended. <laughs> One time, it's according to Adam Sandler or Chris Rock, so, so it's true. Chris Farley used to walk around Saturday Night Live naked all the time to make the writers laugh. Oh my God! One time he's walking around in the writers' room naked <laughs> with a pool cue. He walks in, and he sticks, sticks the pool cue up his dude. Oh. Then he pulls it out and starts licking the tip of it. Oh. <laughs> I swear to Christ. Oh, my God. Get the book and read it. Now, my reaction when I read that was to say, I laughed. I laughed. And I knew that all the people in the room had to laugh. I mean, my sure. God. But it is over the freaking pop. <laughs> it sure even, is. Even hearing about it, can you imagine being in that room? Now, didn't Farley also uh, drop a present off the 80th floor? Oh. Yes. At Rockefeller Center? Yes. Oh, my God. Stuck his ass out the window? And took a number two. What? Can you imagine the speed that landed on 56th Street? That could kill somebody. Can you imagine being killed by Chris Farley's poo? But as bad as that is... You, so you're walking around naked. You go in a writer's room. Hey, dude, and everybody kind of looks away because you're a big sloppy fat guy. You, know, you go out pool cue, and then, you know, the oh. way it was written, very daintily. You know, he yeah. used to do that, you know, fat guy in a little <laughs> jacket thing. Right. You know, but he would do his little dance, really, put it up his Oh, my dude, God. Then pull it out and... Ah! Oh, oh, man. Read the book I can get and that. tell me if I'm not making that you know, up. that's when I got like three quarters of the way through. What? Get, get to the part where it's like Chris Rock, Adam Sandler. Okay, I will. I'm David, David gonna gonna you know what I did? I, I stopped reading it after the, the good parts. You know, <laughs> I stopped reading it after I was into sa you know, I stopped being into Saturday Night Live. Wow. Here's how you read that book. You read it up until Bill Murray left. Okay. Then when you get to the middle part with the, with the cast that sucked, mm -hmm. don't bother reading it. It's like Julia Louis-Dreyfus right. and, and, and her husband. Right but then as soon as it's David Spade and, and even with Billy Crystal and Martin Short. Right. Pick it up there, and it's a good Okay. Read. All right, great. Yeah, I'd like to. Uh, all I was going to say about Bob is that they buried him yesterday in the same cemetery as rocker Richie Valens, comedians George Goebel and Jerry Colonna, actors Chuck Connors, Walter Brennan, William Bendix, and William Frawley. And finally, in southern Michigan, a 23-year-old man has filed assault charges against a stripper who slimed him with breast milk. E. Hey, turn on. Oh, for no. oh He says it got, he says it got in his eyes and his Do nose. Do I make you horny? He complained to the manager who offered him free soft drinks and lap dances. That wasn't enough for this guy who's now taking the dancer to court. One of the club's owners says the woman had given birth recently and, quote, started to leak a little but possibly maybe drizzling on the guy. Baby! I'll drink to that. Confused cops say they'll just turn the case over to prosecutors to see what they want to do with it. Oh. I'm Buzz Burbank on the yeah. Don and Mike Show. They turn it into a video. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Broadcasting history for one day today. Yeah. We'll uh, see you tomorrow with the, the new episode of Oh, I've Been Asked to Say. Dr. Germs' website is www.drgerms.com. Very nice guest. That's mm -hmm. it. we got to go. And, of course, for everybody listening to us in Canada. Take off, <laughs> That's right, eh? Another one of the jokes that we just, not even really funny to begin with, that we just ran into the ground. A good day to you, sir. Good day to you, sir. Good day to you, sir. See you in Canada, Don. Hey, uh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. All right.
Rusty. Hey, does this cue stick smell funny to you? <laughs> we will see you tomorrow. Suck. A uh, BM. When we meet again, Sammy Davis Jr. saying, uh, be kind, be nice, and I hope the next performer has the pleasure of having as nice an audience as you've been tonight. And let me leave you swinging. <laughs> <laughs>